Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. The um, uh, one thing I'd like to clear up to begin with, uh, any accolades that would relate me to now St. Teresa uh, are wrong. I am not uh, here to um, help you get to heaven, if you believe in that. I am not here to uh, help you save the world, if you believe in that. Um, but what I am here uh, to talk about is that um, the old model of uh, wealth, risk, reward, not, doesn't exist anymore. And some of you are perfect examples of that. Going to work for British Telecom at the end of 40 years, maybe getting a gold watch, are done. And as I say, they're fucking done. And they've been deed a long fucking time. Now, I'm not here to insult anybody, but I will. I'm not here to hurt anybody's feelings, but I see a lot of fucking snowflakes in the audience. And we'll talk about why the financial model is dead and why we have so many snowflakes now. And I'll explain to you exactly what a snowflake is. But for those of you, I used to ask, all snowflakes, please raise their hand, but I'm not going to do that in this audience. After um, the vice chancellor uh, took my wife and I to dinner last night, and... Uh, a nice man. He looked like Indiana Jones when he showed up. I looked in the, or my driver looked in the rearview mirror and says, there's a guy that looks like Indiana Jones walking up. He was wearing a, a, a pristine linen suit with an Indiana Jones hat, except he's only this tall. So I don't know how tall Indiana Jones is, but I think he's taller than this. Uh, and he gave me the history, although I expected some Romans to be here. 79 AD, there were Romans here. And we walked around the wall this morning, and although we saw some pretend wannabe Romans, we, I don't believe we saw any real Romans. Uh, and we saw the little kids trying to learn how to be a, a centurion and fighting with a shield. Uh, and uh, it, it made me think of um, what's happened to those kids that used to fight with a shield and today? What happened to those kids that used to get in trouble, as my Yorkshire wife would say, and today. Now it's deemed to be not, as they said when I was growing up, he's just being a boy. Now it's deemed to be, it's not politically correct. And I'm here to tell you, and some of you will agree with me, come two hours before we start canapes and wine, that political correctness is nothing more than a lack of of self-esteem because you want people to like you. There's probably not a man, woman, or child in this audience that if he had his druthers, you would rather be liked than disliked. For those of you that are familiar with Mr. Bezos of Amazon fame, and for those of you that know anything about his history, his culture, his character. You know, building one of the greatest companies that ever was and ever will be, he doesn't give a fuck what you think of him. If you know anything about Mr. Gates, if you knew anything about the late Steve Jobs, if you knew anything about Henry Ford, and I can go on and on and on, they all had one characteristic. They didn't care what you thought of them. I.e., fast forward 2017. We are now in the era of political correctness. Now, notwithstanding I have a couple of titles, you can just refer to me as that old son of a bitch, that old bastard. I don't give a shit what you call me because for the first time in your lives, kids, and I call you all kids because I'm either old enough to be your father or maybe your grandfather or your grandfather, so that's okay. The, um, as was alluded to at the beginning of the, um, the, me getting up here, I am a barrio bad boy. Picture on the right is me standing in front of where my house used to be, and now the Laird of Guthrie Castle. How did I get there? What happened? What the fuck happened? I have been arrested five times, all alcohol-related. I did flunk out of school three times. 
And I went to a school that you have to explain about. The only thing that my university was known for is it got flattened in the 1991 and 1971 earthquake in Los Angeles County. So how did I get here? Why are you here? Some of you drove a long way. Some of you flew from the, uh, the, the continent, as they say. My lovely wife, who's sitting up front, who's from Yorkshire, not too far from here, a chartered accountant. Why does Dan Pena think or know that the systems boost, as she would say? Why do I know that? I know that because, number one, I have been in business 50 years. I've been doing deals 50 years. I've t talked to August bodies like yourself for f more or less 50 years. I've been privileged to be in business with some of the real brains, some of which I just alluded to, uh, that the world has ever seen. I've been business partners with the UK government, the US government, the Canadian government, the Chilean government, the Kuwaiti government, the Japanese government, the Mexican government, and even the Vatican. And all the stories you hear about the Vatican are all true. They're all true. So how did a barrio bad boy get from the barrio to here? Well, the system was different when I was a kid than you're competing against now. Now, I'm not going to here to tell you that the system is stacked against you. But some of you will think in about 20 or 30 minutes' time that the system is stacked against you. It is stacked against you if you have no emotional bank account. The system is stacked against you if you care what other people think. Now, let's just think about this. You were told, growing up, if you came from a regular household, get good grades, stay out of trouble, go to a decent school, Get a decent job, work 25, 30, 35, 40 years, retire, should have enough money, maybe buy a house in Tenerife or wherever the place was, right? That's what the fuck you were told. That was a lie. You were also told probably that you can be anything you want in life. That was even a bigger lie. If you went to Eton, if you went to Cambridge, if you went to Oxford, if you went to one of those kind of schools, then it wasn't a lie. Why do parents, well, when I ask these questions, I don't expect answers. Why do your parents tell you that shite? Because their parents told them the same shite. Now, for at least 20 to maybe 40 years, it hasn't been true. Why did, we, why did they and their parents perpetuate it? To make you feel good? Maybe. If my father were here, God rest his soul, he would tell you, I'm very proud of Dan, but my son is successful not because of me, but in spite of me. Those of you that have attained any success in life aren't here because of your parents. You're here in spite of them. And if you tell yourself the goddamn truth, you know I'm, t I'm telling gospel. So why do we live in a dream world? Many of you in this room have lived bubble-wrapped lives. Many of you in this room have, wouldn't know bad times if it bit you in the bum. And your children look up to you, as they should. And what model do they see? Why do they follow in their dad's and mom's footsteps? Why? Because the generation beforehand did the same. And this is the beginning of the end. It was interesting walking around the wall today. A lot of old gits out there. I felt like a young man. <laughs> On their Zimmer frames, in their little motorcycle things that they, you know, scooter things with a stick. I felt like I was, something was wrong. I was the only guy without a stick. They tell you that because they don't want to disillusion you. They think, just as you think, have thought, have been taught, reading books is taking action. Reading books is not taking action. Taking action is pulling the trigger. 
I've had kids come to me that have read 700 books and he's not 20 years old yet. What the? 700 books. I'm talking about motivational books, personal development books. Now, I'm going to tell you a little secret that you don't know. Andrew Carnegie wrote Think and Grow Rich. Just about everybody on the planet knows that, right? Back in the early part of the last century, uh, excuse me, Napoleon Hill wrote it, excuse me. Andrew Carnegie asked Napoleon Hill to his house, Knob Hill, San Francisco, and said, I've got a project for a young man. Now, he, a young man spending a weekend with an old man at his mansion in San Francisco is a completely other story. But I'm not going to go there. Because I'm going to, that's the only thing about this talk that it's politically correct. But why did that young kid go to spend a whole weekend with a dirty old, oh, I mean an old man? Well, but I'm not going to go there. Okay. As the weekend of whatever ended, he's standing at the door of uh, Mr. Carnegie's mansion, and he's asked by the old man as he pulls out his pocket watch, how would you like the opportunity to write the definitive book on success? And I'm going to introduce you to the 500 most successful people in the world. This was the original thought process. The law of success. He pulled out the watch. He looked at the watch. He, what the young kid, Napoleon Hill, didn't know is he gave him 60 seconds to make an answer. Give him an answer. Now, depending on what story you want to believe, either in 26 seconds or 36 seconds, the kid said, yes, I'll do it. Then the next shoe dropped. Oh, by the way, you're not going to get paid. Then the next shoe dropped. It'll probably take you 20 years. But the kid said yes. Now, that was going to be the rules of success that he was going to write about, right? It wasn't the rules of personal development, was it? Success, right? Success is quantifiable. You either made money or you didn't make money. You either saved the world or you didn't save the world. You either shot 75 on a golf course or you shot 100, right? It's quantifiable. So he wrote the book. 500 people later, he interviewed. It would have taken me about 10 weeks to write that book, but that's a whole other story. And now on the internet, Google and all the crap, you could write that book in a week. And I can hire somebody in the Philippines, virtual, for $500 to write Think and Grow Rich today. There are kids that I know that write PhD dissertations for Oxford and Cambridge and Harvard for 500 bucks. Maybe some of you. You've hired the kids. Okay, so he writes the book. It's successful. It sells millions of copies. Then Andrew Carnegie dies, right? He went crazy giving all his money away or trying to give all his money away. And now what happens to poor little Napoleon Hill? He goes, boost. He's bankrupt. A guy named W. Clement Stone finds him, an old insurance peddler who built a company called Combined Insurance and became a multi multimillionaire. And he finds Napoleon and he says, I want you to come to work for me and we're going to sell a new product, a new idea. So now he's bust, he's broke. So, you know, he's all ears. He says, What's that going to be? And it's going to be, um, uh, personal development. Well, why are we going to call it personal development? And the old insurance peddler said, because you can't quantify development and you can quantify success, you fucking idiots. And that's how personal development was born in the early 60s. Because it's an amorphous. You can't get your arms around it. This is all why wealth, risk, reward, not. You can't get a hold of personal development. You, he could have taken 10 courses, you could have taken 11 courses, and you could have taken two courses, and you can't quantify between the three of you. And that's just how they want it. That's just how they want it. When I started in this business 24 years ago, Ted Nicholas, a mentee of mine, told me, Dan, the personal development industry is $1 billion, $1 going around to a billion people. I'm not going to ask you how many books, how many podcasts, how many, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to ask you that. But you want to know why we are where we are? Because we've had almost two full generations of that. 
Nobody holds you accountable. We've gone from the law of success to I'm okay, you're okay, cha-cha-cha. What the fuck? And you wonder why we accomplish so little. Now remember, the talk's about wealth, risk, reward, not. Because we don't know how to value risk and reward anymore. Some of you aren't old enough to even have had a grandparent that knows how to value it. Now I'm a product of my father, the greatest generation. That's what they say, World War II vets, greatest generation. Who saved the world from this country as well, the greatest generation. You read about it all the time. What happened? We've gone from the greatest generation to, in my humble opinion, and there's nothing humble about me, to the fucking worst generation. What's happened? What's happened is, now you can go to school, and we have three teams that finish the league. They don't get first, second, and third place now. They all get winner's badges. Is that how it is when you go out and get a job? No. They get winner's badges. There are no winners and losers now. My kids just miss that, the cusp. My children are all in their 30s. And just when, when they were going to play soccer, which is what they call it in America, and they were just at the end of their careers and they weren't going to get any ribbons, fuck this. I mean, we're not, we're not participating in this anymore. Because I knew how wrong that was. I knew. I see some friendly faces, if you want to call it that. I have mentees in the audience. I'm not going to point them out because I don't want you to mob them. That have been successful, are successful, and plan on being successful if they want anything to do with me the rest of their lives. So what happened to wealth, risk, reward? Not. It started a long time ago. When W. Clement Stone, the old insurance peddler, God rest his soul, and I used to sell insurance, door to door. I've seen the sun come up in a, over a kitchen table trying to sell a $10,000 Dollar whole life policy. Most of you in this room, maybe all of you in this room, have never experienced that. One, the sun coming up, sure, on some drunken whatever, but I mean over a table with about a 50th cup of coffee trying to convince Mr. and Mrs. Jones, Ollie and Margaret, that they should buy 10,000 whole life. So I got the commission that Neil was talking about. So why did we go from per, per, success, which is quantifiable, where you had to be accountable, to no accountability? What happened? Now, we've seen the Romans come and go, right? We've seen the Greeks come and go. We've seen five or six or seven other civilizations come or go. How far in the cycle is, hum, is humanity now? How far? Are we, as they say in America, in the first inning, the fourth inning, the seventh inning, or are we in the ninth inning? What are we doing today, notwithstanding Mr. Musk, Elon's a great guy, very bright, a great entrepreneur of extraordinary abilities, who surrounded himself with extraordinary people, who says he's going to die on the way to Mars. Why does he want to go to Mars? Ask yourself. The models bust. There are certain pockets around the world that still understand, but there are few in academia. Now, I've been asked to speak at a lot of schools. And last year when I, was, uh, I had the privilege of speaking at Oxford, um, I thought it was a mistake. I still remember uh, the estate manager coming down and saying, you got a call from Oxford, and I said, uh, what, did my Rhodes Scholarship get lost in the post? Now, when I made that joke at uh, Oxford, nobody laughed. <laughs> Not one goddamn student laughed. Um, but it gave me the idea that, 
hell, I can go and talk at universities. I'm not getting paid. I travel there on my own nickel. Um, and I can spread the word a lot faster because I stopped giving seminars. And as was pointed out uh, 10 or 15 minutes ago, this is only the third time this century that I've talked outside um, uh, Guthrie Castle, where I, my home. But, um, and I'm now speaking at a lot of different schools. But schools call me or contact me, and then they do their research. Then they cancel. <laughs> then they cancel. I've been canceled by Columbia University. I've been canceled by some of the best schools on the planet. And as if you've read uh, anything about my bio, uh, a Harlem charter school, minority kids, it's not dissimilar to what I, well, how I was raised, canceled me the night, 10 o'clock the night before I was supposed to be there the next morning. If I had not read my emails, I would have showed up. I should have showed up, but I didn't, and which uh, caused a whole controversy, as they say. But I'm not telling you anything. Uh, well, I am telling you new news to many of you. But I mean, other people on the planet realize this. It's just not the ones that you're hanging with, chilling with. Kids, eagles fly alone. Eagles don't go to the pubs. Eagles don't go to the World Cup. Eagles don't go to the World Series. They fly alone. Show me your friends, and I'll show you your future, young man. For most of the people that are sitting in this room, your future is dismal. So I have nothing to sell you. I don't give a fuck. I have no book. I have nothing. I don't care if you like me or not. It doesn't make shit to me. That's why I can afford to tell you the truth. I don't have an upsell, a side sell, or any of that crap. I'm not sure you even understand all that. If the other personal developed guys, and I'm not one of them, were so fucking successful, why are they not rich? Did you ever ask yourself? If marketing really worked, if internet marketing really worked, test small, roll out big. How many people? Everybody's heard that, right? If it really worked, why aren't all those guys flush with cash, truckloads of it? On Christmas, New Year's, Father's Day, Halloween, whatever, 50% off all my product. How many times do you see that? Well, if they can take 50% off their product because it's Valentine's Day, how much is the shit worth anyway? I've seen 90% off product. Sales indicate the price was too high. When value is clear, decisions are easy, as Roy Disney told me about 48 years ago. When value is clear, decisions are easy. When an uh, attractive man walks in the door, you, know, you, you don't have to spreadsheet it. You know he's good looking or not, right? Yeah. When a, a good looking woman walks in the door, you don't have to spreadsheet it, right? You know. Why have we gone away from that kind of decision making process? Because it's easy to procrastinate with a spreadsheet. They used to call it Lotus 1, 2, 3. I'm, I'm dating myself. OK, so now, why are we here? Now, have you ever seen a three-year-old unhappy? Unless they've soiled their, their nappies, they're all happy, aren't they? Giggle, giggle, yeah, 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 right? Has anybody tell me? The, three years old, OK, now. Seven years old, same thing. They're all happy. Then what happens? By the way, self-esteem is built the first seven years of life. You either have it or you don't. Who are you around the first seven years of life? Mommy, mostly. Sometimes daddy. Sometimes an older brother or a sister. And maybe a grandparent, right? So if you don't have any self-esteem, you know who to blame. So what happens after you're seven? Why are you happy? Everybody in this room was happy then. What the fuck happened? Your parents. Mommy and daddy happened. And I love my parents. Self-esteem is the basis of all high performance. 
You either feel good about yourself with my lovely wife who's sitting there. Nobody loves me more than I love myself. You can't be a good human being unless you love yourself. Love yourself first, then you love everybody else. I, I can just tell by the, looking at the audience, we have a lot of Save the World kids. Great, absolutely fucking terrific. But Bill Gates didn't start saving the world until he made $850 jillion. None of those guys, Warren Buffett, you name them, didn't give a shit about the world until they made $852 jillion. So I tell the kids, go out and make the $852 jillion, then save the fucking world. Instead of carrying placards around the fucking embassies, like morons. I can see some of you morons out there. And by the way, when I say retarded, I'm going to tell a little story. I'm giving a speech down in um, Tahiti many years ago. And... Um, I was wearing a suit that looked like this, and it had the air conditioning, it was a Sheraton, and it had 3,500 people in the audience. And I was, up to, I was there to fire them up about this, uh, a whole other subject. And um, I was perspiring so much that I was leaving pools of water on the, um, on the stage, and I was elevated about this high. Everybody just think Dan's fired up. And uh, I said something to the effect, well, if you run with cripples, you learn how to limp. And the last thing is I slipped from the stage, and I slipped, and I thought, well, you know, there must be a God because he's punishing me. I did a cartwheel. I tucked my legs in, and the last thing I saw was a row of wheelchairs. <laughs> That's the last bloody thing I saw. I said, oh, God, please don't let me hit the wheelchair, kids. So, and I landed like this, and everybody thought it was part of the act. <laughs> I've done it one time. That was the only time I'll never do it. And then I went up to, at the break, and I uh, asked for forgiveness to all the wheelchair kids. And they say, oh, no, no, they treat us, we're not really crippled. Blah, 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 blah. You hang around with cripples, you learn how to limp. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. And I got nothing to sell you. You are, to, you are seeing the only human being, perhaps on the face of the earth, is about to say something, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I, I, may the, if there is a God, may he strike my wife dead and our three children dead this instant. When I say, I don't give a fuck if you like me or don't. I got nothing to sell you. If you don't like it, eat it. But I'm going to say my piece. I'll be 72 in a few weeks. Do I sound 72? No. Do I act 72? No. Some of you might think I dress 72, but that's a whole other subject. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls... We have a crisis in the, on the planet, in my judgment. We have a, a bloody crisis because we have an educational system, the socio and economic, the socioeconomic milieu of the financial educational system is bust. It's flat bust. Anomalies like me come around not that often. Not that often. Considering what I've been through, and some of the crazy shit that I've done, I mean, it's a, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. Sally and I, my lovely wife, and I support, uh, I think, seven uh, charitable institutions, four of which are Catholic-based, uh, one of which is uh, non-denominational, and the other one are, are Christian of some sort. And so I have about 240 nuns pray for me every day. And they say, I am on the fucking rocket ship to heaven. I am on the rocket ship. You know that ship that Elon says he's going to be on? Nah, me. But I'm going to heaven. I'm not going to goddamn Mars. I don't give a shit about Mars. It's bust, and we don't have anybody telling the truth. We don't have anybody telling the truth. Why? One, it's not politically correct, and two, there's no money in it. And since I'm not trying to, I'm not selling anything, you know, I, you know, and, um, so how did we go from wealth, risk, reward, not? Now, money's not the only thing in life. I understand that. It's the only thing to keep track of, but that aside. It's not the only thing in life. But why aren't there classes, aren't there podcasts, aren't there seminars to show, one, how to stay like this, or two, 
you need to create wealth before you can save the world. There's a lot, a lot of formulas to save the world. I have no idea whether any of them are any good or not. I don't. That's not, you know, that's not my calling. And I only discovered this calling 24 years ago when I got thrown out of a public company that I founded. The shareholders tossed me out of my derriere. Uh, and I tried to teach university one year. I found it very unfulfilling. I started my class with 300. It was an honors class. It's where I went to school. You had to compete to get, write an essay to get in. The first uh, class we had was about a little over 300 in a big auditorium. And um, we finished the class with 13. So 287 dropped the class. We had about 300 until the last day you could drop a class. There's some regulation. You can drop it and not get a grade or blah, blah, blah. Then we ended up with 13. 13. And this was 20, over 20 years ago. They couldn't t take the heat. God only knows what they're like now. As we walked around, uh, as uh, Professor Wheeler walked us around campus uh, yesterday afternoon, and I saw the young kids, they looked nice enough, and I made the comment. I mean, all these college kids look alike, no matter what the various universities I've had the privilege of speaking at. Y'all look nice. Do you know what the derivative of the word nice is? 13th, 14th century. Come on, all you. Now, uh, for, for, if we have any English professors that said, don't raise your hand. But uh, do, do you know what the derivative of the, and none of my mentees, do, do you know uh, what the derivative of the word nice is? Silly. Silly, idiot, retarded. Silly, idiot, retarded. Oh, you look like a nice guy. You gotta smack them in the face when they say that to you. And now, 500 years later, oh, he's a nice girl. When my mother used to say, she, why don't you go up with her? She's a nice girl. I used to jump. Nice girl. I, I don't want nice girls, Mom. That's the last person I want to go out with when I'm young and single, is a nice person. I want somebody that acts like a whore in church. Does that translate? Yeah, okay. So what happened to us? Wealth, risk, reward, not. Now, when you couple so far what I've said in about 20, 25 minutes, and you try to balance in your own lives risk-reward ratio. I'm going to do this at what risk? I'm going to do this at what reward? OK? If saving the trees is your reward, yet you're not bright enough to understand you've got to go make a trillion dollars, but, but, but let's, let's say you are bright enough. Well, I've got to go. I've got to somehow come up with a, a some kind of gimmick or scheme or whatever to, you know, save the world. That's going to take time. Okay? So you go to school, you go to a, a good school, you get a degree. Well, now you can't get a, a good job with just a regular degree. So you go get a master's, you go get a PhD. Okay, so you, you, what you're really doing is you're spreading out the, the real decision-making process. You're procrastinating in one way because now they're saying, uh, that you don't have to have a degree. And right now, with all the burden the kids carry for the debt from having uh, degrees, in this country it's a little different. But in the United States, for example, I mean, uh, our daughter went to a prestigious graduate school uh, to the tune of five quarters, it was $105,000. Not counting books, room and board, etc. Now, in her particular case, like she said, I, I, you know, some people. Um, choose to be uh, born to uh, poor parents. I choose to be born to you, Daddy. So uh, that's, not, that's not something my, our daughter thought of. But our son wanted to pay for school on his own. If I can't do it on scholarships or my own money, I won't go. So he went to prestigious schools and uh, had to work, etc. cetera. And uh, I think working and going to school is a good thing. Just recently, we're, we're, remember, wealth, risk versus reward, not. I just happened to look. Uh, I'm eligible to collect Social Security, which is like the government pension after so many years. And I'm at the, I'm at the max. And, uh, and the longer I wait, I can't get any more than I could when I was 70. So I had him send me all the paperwork. In August of 1962, 61, excuse me, I turned 16 years old. And that's the first time you can work legally and get a Social Security card. I turned 
16 on the 10th of August, and the first month, August of 61, I earned $241. Now, if you do the maths, now I don't know why you call it maths here, but if you do the maths, 240, and I got paid a dollar, five an hour. Skip the nickel, a dollar an hour, and I was part of a union, Teamsters Union. So I got a dollar an hour for 240 hours, so I roughly worked 240 hours in 20 days. If you, wanted, you had a headache, wanted to go home, I'll take your shift. If you had a, uh, wanted to go see your mom, I took your shift. If you wanted a day off to be with your girlfriend, I took your shift. I couldn't work enough hours. But 20 days, 240 hours. Now you can't find anybody to take a second shift. And the work ethic is all wrong. When my father retired, after 28 years as a Los Angeles policeman, 28 years, he got, he had 700 days leave not paid for. So he didn't, he didn't take leave for 700 days over 28 years. Well, if you do the math again, he barely took any days off in 28 years. And they gave you a check in those days. A check in those days. And so he got a, a pretty hefty check. Now, a few years ago, my wife and I were in Australia. We listened to a couple explain to their children how they were going to map their entire careers. The kids were 13 and 15, respectively. How they were going to map their careers, how to get the best job with the best statutory leave. What the fuck? That's how you, I mean, why? We're, I, have, I was bloody on my shin. Sally kept kicking me. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. Boom, boom. Don't say anything. I just, I wanted to go and choke that mother. I wanted to choke her eyes out of her fucking head. And then I wanted to beat the old man until he was uh, like, a, uh, like a goddamn watermelon. Those kids have no chance. None. And there was another young couple there that was p mapping their life already based on statutory leave. And they were Americans. It made me even more sick. How can the kids have a chance? Going from job to job just so they can accumulate more statutory fucking leave. People ask me why I still work 50, 60 hours a week and I'm supposed to be retired. I saw my dad never take a day off. And then you'll say, well, that's why you're so fucked up, Dan, because your dad never took a day off. He never took me to the ball game. He never took me to the ball game. I can, I can guarantee that. I still remember... He got into, when I was about 13 or 14, which I was getting in a lot, a lot, a lot of trouble, he got into this. He took me to a father-son picnic once, and we're at the picnic, and my dad was an all-American gymnast. People say, some people say I strive because I was a mediocre athlete, and I'm being kind to myself when I say mediocre, and he was an all-American gymnast. And we went to a park where they were having the junior high school father-son picnic, and there were like rings. There's a sand pit here, and you can chin up bar and rings and stuff. My dad told me, stand there. And when my dad said, stand there, I didn't fucking move, not one centimeter. And he walked up to the, um, the rings. He took them like this into an iron cross, and he directly went into a reverse iron cross, which means your feet are above your head. He's 41 years old then. And then he did a couple of other fancy things, which I forget the names of. Then he flipped to a dismount, and then he, all the other fathers disappeared. <laughs> there wasn't another daddy standing there. When my dad said something, kids sue parents now to get divorced. That's so far beyond my comprehension, I wouldn't even look cross-eyed at my dad. My dad invented tough love in the 50s. But again, he'd say, I'm, my son's not successful because of me. My son's successful in spite of me. But if he were sitting here, he'd be, he'd be 99. He died in his early 90s. He'd say, well, how's your program working out with your kids? That was his retort to everybody when they'd say, Dan, Manny, you're too hard on him. Well, how's your program working out? You know? Well, what's your kid done worth a shit? 
father of three children, doesn't live with the women, been in jail. How's your program working out? And now discipline is not considered politically correct. In the early 90s in my seminar, I hit the participants. Hit them. Oh, I could cave your head in like a fucking watermelon. I mean, hit them. I had people come up to me. Dan, I want to leave this seminar with remembering you. Please break my jaw. Heathrow Airport, 1999. Boy, I broke more than this fucking jaw. <laughs> then you were embarrassed to go to the police to say you got your ass whipped. What the fuck happened? Wealth, risk, reward, not. We have now almost two generations, or in my judgment, at least a generation and a half, has grown up not understanding. And they have some uh, foggy notion of what wealth is. Again, it's not everything. I was going to be a priest. Can you believe that shit? I used to teach catechism. I taught Bible study as a kid. What was I thinking? Anyway, I don't know what I was thinking, but I, I wanted to be a priest. But in my age, in the early 50s, mid, I mean, you, a Catholic altar boy, I mean, and I never saw any abuse other than getting beat. I saw that. But uh, the sexual abuse that the Catholic Church has now become famous for, I never saw any of that. But getting a fucking beaten, I saw that because I was the recipient of that. And whenever the nuns used to beat me, my dad had beat me when he got home or when he got back to town. Because if the nuns have to beat you, son, you're not taking advantage of the Catholic education. So I'm going to beat you again. Now just imagine today, my dad would be in, life for, uh, he'd be in prison for life. My kid brother, who's 58 or 59, as he said on my 70th birthday a couple years ago, he said that he's the number two guy in the uh, Los Angeles County Fire Department, the largest fire department in the world. He's number two. He decided to go up the public service route like my father, our father. And he said in front of an august body just like yourselves, he said, if my father had beaten me more, I would have been more successful like my big brother Danny. And he believes it with all his heart. And I'm not suggesting you go home and beat your kids. So don't give me that shit. I don't want, I don't want to hear that of emails. And, but I do suggest, and when Dan said suggest Wake up, moron. Suggest you go home and take a look at the discipline or the lack thereof you have with your children. But if they're past this age, you don't have a chance. Forget about it. Because self-esteem is built the first seven years. Now, how did my parents get so... Remember, wealth, risk, reward, not. How did my parents get so smart? Serendipity. 1946, my mother was writing, reading Reader's Digest which is like an uh, abbreviated format of a, a much larger book, about this book, and it was called uh, Dr. Benjamin Spock, How to Raise Kids. And why did he write in 1946? Because from 1945, everybody was coming back from the war, we were having a lot of kids. So this definitive book, up until the time he died in 1998, had sold more copies than any other book other than the Bible. And my mother saw the Reader's Digest, and she raised me according to this. So I had, on the one hand, my mom. On the other hand, my he, And by the way, one of the uh, precepts of this book is you never tell your children no. How do you, well, anyway, I didn't get into anything. Buy the book. Anyway, and anyway, my dad, who never said yes. <laughs> or the worst thing that could ever happen in my life, oh, you don't want to, oh, you, okay, I'll, I'll tell your father when he comes back. Oh, no way did I want my dad involved in anything. I'll do whatever you want, Mom. Because I know the first thing my dad would do is whack me. Then he'd ask, what did he do again? <laughs> but my dad, who didn't have a father, his father died three months before he was born in 1918. My dad raised me like the Second World War and the Korean War. He raised me like, um, like uh, the military. That's why when I went off to the military during the height of the Vietnam War, and people were all complaining. I said, shit, you should have lived at my house. This is nothing. This is bloody nothing. 
And um, I have, you know, in my dad's philosophy, he didn't really give a shit if I loved him. He just wanted the effect of me being a, he didn't call, use the word high performance, super successful person, and he equated super success monetarily, not like the personal development guys do, which is an amorphous of just smoke and shite. We probably got some really high performer or high, uh, good, uh, I don't even know the right word that, uh, about uh, high performance vis-a-vis uh, -vis personal development. And I've sat with some of the biggest PD guys on the planet, this close. They say, you're killing us, Dan. What are you telling that shit for? If it wasn't for these idiots, we couldn't make a living. You have no idea what they think of you. You have no idea that, how they laugh about you. You have no idea. Brings me to tears just thinking about it. My own kids, who I never helped, never gave uh, my daughter going to school, never got them a job, um, they chose to go to schools. But not everybody has to go to schools to be a high performance person. Of course, everybody points at Bill Gates and uh, Zuckerberg more recently, but they, as much as went to school, they went to Harvard, and so they, you know, they, they have those networks. Okay, so now, Wealth, risk, reward, not. We don't know how to evaluate true risk, reward. Everybody in everybody's family in this room has got an idiot uncle or cousin or somebody that lost his ass in some investment. Everybody in this room. And, that's, and that resonates. And that's what your subconscious dwells on. Because you don't want to be made a fool like he was made a fool, and they're still talking about it, and he's been dead 30 years. And you ask why you are where you are. We have some people in the room that flew from the continent to be here. And we well, thank you very much. Uh, I thank you for your interest. And again, I want to thank the university. I'm not finishing. I just want well, I'm thinking about it. I want to thank you. Uh, I want to thank the university um, for the opportunity. And see, I still call it an opportunity, even though I'm not selling anything. Because it is an opportunity, because I'm not um, the least contr controversial person that uh, I'm sure they could pick to come and speak uh, to uh, you kids. Um, but um, it's, it's, it, it never ceases to amaze me that I'm the only person, apparently, that has figured out why do we go from success to development. And I am bright now. I'm, I'm not here to tell you I'm not bright. Uh, that, that'd be disingenuous. That'd be a lie. I'm super bright. And I have a high IQ. Compared to this audience, I probably only got this audience by about 50, 60 points additional IQ than this audience has. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about IQ. Let's just, for this example, say that we all got 100 IQ. For some of you, I'm taken away. For some of you, I'm given. OK? Can anybody have 10 or 15 or 20 times our IQ at 100? No. Well, then why do people every day achieve 10 or 20 or 50,000 times more than we? If they can't have an IQ 10 or 20 or 30 times more than ours? Because they dream bigger than we. They dream bigger. I don't like President Obama, but I do take my hat off for one thing. Big, bodacious goals. I'm going to be the first black president. As is he sucking that weed in California when he's 19 years old? That I take my hat off to him. Why don't you dream bigger? Again, wealth, risk, reward. We don't dream bigger because we've seen our parents fail. We've seen our grandparents fail. We hear about failures. In today's news, I mean, failures are better news than successes. I've been told veterans don't make good news, good TV. I've been working on a veteran program for, for a couple of years now. The vets don't make good TV unless they're sweating with their muscles rippling in the mud, is what I've been told, by big Hollywood production companies. Now, to make the news cycle, it's got to be good TV. Good TV. Now, Prime Minister here, has given some good TV here, unfortunately, for her uh, reputation in recent um, weeks. 
one, calling for the election. I wouldn't have called for it, but that's just me. Okay, two, unfortunately, this terrible fire. And I'm told, didn't we just recently, last night, have another uh, killing spree? I didn't even hear about that. I was preparing for this. Um, that's what makes the news cycles now. That's what makes the news cycle. Okay, wealth. Okay, another reason that you are where you are is because people, many people define wealth different ways. For those of you, we're just going to call you the tree huggers over here, and we're going to call you the money grubbers over here, just for the example, okay? Since I see a few of my money grubbers in this side of the audience. Okay, tree huggers have a different definition. The money grubbers is pretty defi definite, finite. Don't you think it's easier to accomplish a finite goal than an amorphous? Amorphous just means smoke. It is. It is. And I've been at this high performance individual for 50 years. In fact, my 50th anniversary was June 1. When the first high performance act I ever accomplished was I graduated from OCS, I became an officer and gentleman by the act of the United States fucking Congress said, you forevermore, you barrio bad boy, you bum who tried to kill your teacher in the sixth grade, you're an officer and a gentleman. And my life's never been the same. Now if I had killed that teacher when I was in grammar school, I would be standing up here. Allah was with me that day. I dropped a fish aquarium about this size on a teacher. You would call it from the first floor, from the second floor window. And he moved. I had to scratch his ass. I don't know what he did. He moved about four or five inches, and I hit him in the shoulder, broke his collarbone, but didn't hit him in the heed, as they say in Scotland. But if I had hit him in the head, my whole life would have been different. So somebody up there likes me. I'm the luckiest son of a bitch that ever walked the face of the earth. I'd really rather have be the luckiest son of a bitch that ever walked the face of the earth because I'd rather be lucky than smart. Some of you in this audience would rather be smart than lucky because you're just kids. You don't know what the fuck that means. And you're just talking rubbish, as my wife would say. When you, if you ever have a choice, if somebody comes down and says, would you rather be lucky or smart? Don't even hesitate. Lucky, 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 please. But your parents have raised you, and your grandparents raised them. It, you would rather be smart. When I went off to school, nobody ever told me to get good grades. Nobody ever told me any of that stuff. My dad only had one goal for me in life. To keep me alive till the age of reason. He didn't know if that was 20, 30, 40, or ever. We have a thing coming out for free on my site about how, you, um, how I increased my comfort zone growing up. I didn't know I was doing it at the time, but some of the crazy shit things that I did as a kid as a young adult, um, you, have, you have no, no conception of, um, we have a weekly report my mentees have to fill out where you have to list daily, how did I scare myself today to get outside your comfort zone? And they're just weenie shit, like we had a guy go in New York on 54th and Madison, lay naked in, in the middle of the street, naked, 54th and Madison. For those of you who've ever been to New York, it's a busy street. Guess what? He didn't even get arrested. It's New York City. They run naked all the time. I had another kid going to a Starbucks in uh, Chicago wearing a nappy, a diaper. No, he, got, he asked, they asked him to leave, but he didn't get arrested. Now, what kind of, what, what the hell is wrong with, how can you walk around? Something's wrong. Don't you see it? They got a guy that plays a guitar who runs around naked. I forget uh, on Matt, on, um, uh, I forget what street it is. He, uh, a cowboy with a guy, he wears a little skinny briefs, and he's been there 15 years. 
I've walked, I've walked by him 20 times myself. You just block it out. You don't even see it anymore. If I were to judge the people in this audience by the last week of your, your life up to today, the people that you talked to, Skyped, uh, texted, Facebooked, uh, all those ways that you can contact people, how would I rate you? Like Machiavelli, uh, a ruler uh, rated by the, the people he surrounds himself with? Morons? Would you be proud of the people that you dealt with the last week? Or would you be ashamed? I got a lot of shame looks. On, as my wife would say, I don't like to tell you kids, but there's a lot of shame out there. I've had kids come to me, women, and I'm not... I slag women off enough, but this is a special slag. Talk to their mothers 15 times a day on the phone. 15 fucking times a day. And they're not, mom's not sick? Nothing wrong with her. The daughter's sick, big time. How can you possibly do anything positive 15 times on the phone with your mom? And I only have three regrets. Speaking of mom... One, I'm a combat trained military officer who's never seen combat. Two, the night before my mother died, I yelled at her, God damn it, you're not fucking sick, you're not fucking sick, you're going to be well by tomorrow. She was dead in the night. And three, I didn't set my goals high enough. Those are my regrets. And if I didn't set my goals high enough, The men in the audience, their, their eggs should be sucked up into their stomach cavity. I don't know what the equivalent thereof for women, but you know what I mean. Nothing I can do, I've, but I've tried to say, uh, well, anyway, I won't tell you about my mercenary days, but anyway, I can't do anything about my mom, but I sure as hell can do something about the goals, and that's why I continue to pound and beat the kids, uh, metaphorically now. Um, because I'm in the regret minimization. Well, remember, it's wealth, risk, reward, not. I'm in the regret minimization business. I'm trying to limit your regrets, you old git, from one the 20, 30 years from now. Now, I'm a hell of a world-class eulogy speaker. When you die, you tell your wife she's still uh, alive, get Dan to tell, say my eulogy for me. So I normally go to the hospital while they're <laughs> gasping for air, and I say, well, what do you want me to say about you? Do you want me to lie? What do you want? Tell me. And they say, and not one single one to date has ever said that they regret missing their daughter's sweet 16, missing their son's football this. Every single one of them, 100%, have all said, I regret not taking this risk. I regret not taking that risk. I regret not going into business with you 25 years ago, Dan. They regret the things they didn't do. More specifically, they regret the risks they didn't take. Again, wealth, risk, reward, not. It's the not because of all these things I've alluded to, some specifically. And I see it getting worse and worse. I, I'd like to be an optimist here, but I can't be, because I'd be a lying fucking git personal development slime ball if I was told you things are getting better. They're getting worse! I mean, the state of the world today, as compared to when I started giving high-performance coaching in 1993, is infinitely worse off. In those days, we had 3 to 5 to 6 percent of the kids were snowflakes. Now we got 90 percent. Now, some of you won't even be able to relate to what I'm about to say. And this is mostly young men, not young women, because you wouldn't want young women to do what I'm about to say. But a stiff drink and a good fuck would kill 99% of the guys that walk the face of the earth that are less than 30. That's a sad motherfucking commentary on life. You want a man sleeping next to you or you want to... I rest my case on that. Although it's one of my favorite topics, I'll rest my case on that. 
Now, I'm not going to ask you how many books you've read because I don't want to embarrass you. But I know people that have read more than the 700 books at 19, 20. I, don't, I have not read, I should be ashamed of this, but I'm not, I have not read 700 books in my entire life. And when I say I don't read, I've read the classics. I've read Shakespeare. I've read the goddamn Bible. But I sure should have not read the books that you guys read. Because you read them because it's your form of procrastination. Because you've been told by somebody wrongfully, that reading is taking action. There's a high-performance guy out there right now, which I'm not going to use his name, that supposedly reads two books a day or two books an hour or some shit, I don't know. And so now a bunch of you monkeys are trying to do the same thing. One of my most successful mentees um, has only read one book in his life. Some people say he can't read or write, but I hope he, I don't, I don't care if he can. He's read my book 15, 20 times, and it's not for sale, so please, please don't ask me. It's not for sale. Why did I stop selling it many years ago? Because somebody showed, what's the name, the thing is you can put uh, on a bogus um, internet and you, uh, you Tor oh, I didn't know Torrent existed. Somebody showed me my book on Torrent. That wasn't bad enough. Then somebody showed me my book, my real book, for sale for 9950 bucks on eBay. 9950 I said, that's it. I mean, let that guy reprint the goddamn book. I mean, I, I, I stopped selling the book. Corinth, that's right. That was a real revelation to me. I didn't know thing like stuff like that existed. But now I put everything on my site for free. Last several years. Why do I put it on for free? To take the last fucking excuse from you, you weenie, why you can't do it. It's all for free, Snowflake. You know what they say now? Again, wealth, risk, reward, not. I don't know where to start, Mr. Baker. Where do I start? Jesus Christ. I don't know. You got, so you got thousands of Baker. What do I do? What you ought to do, no, metaphorically, what you ought to do is swallow a fucking revolver, Snowflake. Where do I start? What do I do? And by the way, I'm not faking it. We get calls like that. But I mean, it's like water off a duck's back now. I've heard it so many times. I don't give a shit. Let them go fucking jump in a, I used to say jump in a river, but I mean, whatever, you know what I mean. Okay, wealth, risk, reward, not. So you were raised the way you were raised, who raised the one, blah, 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 okay. And you don't understand the really risk reward. You don't understand. And some of you define reward as one thing. Some of you in this room, hopefully, their risk is your reward. Hopefully. I have no documentation to back that up. But hope springs eternal, and even I can hope when I know it's not going to come true. Now, one of the other things, again, risk, um, excuse me, wealth, risk, reward, not. When I was growing up, about the same time I dropped the thing on the teacher, um, I believed in Santa Claus, the Tooth Fairy, and uh, that kind of stuff until I was 11 years older, more or less. I got in a lot of fights about that. But in grammar school, I was the biggest kid on, on, on the, not campus, on the schoolyard. And then everybody caught up with me when we went into junior high school and high school. Um, but um, so my, my family, my mother allowed me to believe in Peter Pan and stuff like that. I was old. Now you can't tell the kids the truth quick enough, can you? You got to take the fucking dream away from them, can't, don't you? You got to fuck up their life forever, don't you? Just like they fucked your life up, don't you? You can't fucking stand to see them happy like this. You fucking retards. It's unbelievable. Look 
what the fuck happened to you? God almighty, that makes me cry. Look at, now look at you miserable fucking shit bags. And for those of you that mothers, I blame you the most. I've got a whole graphic, metaphorical, metaphorically uh, explicit talk about this in mothers and having babies, but I'm not going to, we're an institution of higher learning here, so I'm not going to go through that, but just imagine the worst fucking things about not having kids, and then go about a hundred times worse than that, and that's my talk. You're bringing the kids in this world for all the wrong fucking reasons. You get married for all the wrong fucking reasons. You stay married for all the wrong fucking reasons. Holy shit. I'm on fire. There's a little weenie kid who's got the something entrepreneurs on fire. Give me a fucking break. With the greatest respect, Captain Dumas. He's a vet. But I mean, I am on fire. Because I still want to know that I can drag some of you across the fucking goal line. My goal, as I told <sighs> Professor Wheeler last night, if I change one of your lives, I will consider coming down here, the expense, the go back, worth it. Just one. I taught for a year at university. I had one kid, one kid that I made a difference to. Because you're so steeped to stay within your comfort zone because you're afeard. You're afraid of life. Just like your parents were afraid, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I tell the Scots, what the fuck ever happened to Braveheart? Where the fuck did he go? What happened to Willie Wallace, who was only this tall, and his sword was this tall, who was a lying, cheating, thief, rapist, murderer, but now you talk about him, I mean, him, Moses, I mean, but what happened to the Scots? Now they all run around with their tail between their legs. I can say the same thing about here. Gunboat diplomacy was invented by the Brits. They ruled two-thirds of the fucking world by not asking permission for a goddamn thing. If you didn't like it, they blew the shit out of you. They give you a broadside with all their cannons. Right? Right. What the hell happened to Britain? Political correctness happened. Now they wouldn't say shit if it was in their mouth. Actually, shocking. That's bloody shocking. <laughs> Fuck. What happened? You once had it. I tease my, my wife about this. She says, w we at least had two-thirds of the world, Dan. Right? right? Yes. Okay. But you don't anymore. You don't anymore. Winston, Hurt, Winston Churchill, one of my idols, said it better than I can. But, I mean, uh, we're island people, we're choking on our own blood. We will never surrender. We will never give up. What the fuck happened to those people? That was only 70 years ago. You once had it. You once had it. I tell the Filipinos, we lived in the Philip, we lived in Asia 12 years. The Filipino people once had it. A lot of the uh, people around the world once had it. Now you've got to be politically correct. You can't go in and talk like you think. You can't go in and talk like I do and get money from a bank, you think. Wrong! You don't understand risk reward, melon heads. When I came here in 1981, they say, legend has it, young lady, I drug investment bankers across boardroom tables by their necktie choking them. Legend has it. What do you think? I want, you to, I want that picture to freeze in your mind forever. And now, when you go home and look at yourself, sorry state that you're in. 
I've had mothers, daughters, grandfathers, three generations that I've worked with. The granddaughter looks at the mother, the mother looks at the father, and the mother will say, we fuck up our kids. And the grandfather will say, the best, not the best, but the most used response by my dad's generation, the grandparent that I'm talking about, we did the best we could or we didn't know any better. You've used that. Your parents have used that. But they could have known better if they fucking took the time. Now I'm going to make an announcement here. Everybody knows everything about me because of Google. I am now going to announce I wipe my ass with my right hand, which is the only thing that's not on Google. I say it again. I wipe my ass with my right hand. Now you know everything there is to know about me. Wealth, risk, reward not. Now I could go, I could speak from now until my birthday in a few weeks and not take a break. There are so many examples of why we are where we are and why the systems boost, as my lovely wife would say. And at least 10% of you within the next 30 days will buy a book, listen to a podcast, or go to a fucking seminar, I'll guarantee it. And they're going to tell you you're okay. Everything's going to work out fine. Which is a bloody joke. But because that's closer to your own once needs, desires, you'll believe it, and in a few weeks, days, hours, whatever, you'll forget that I ranted and raved. And if the day ever comes when I have as many following on social media as all the guys, I'll commit suicide. Because I'll know that I did something wrong. I have the lowest following. Well, I don't know about, I got 50 or 60,000 on Facebook. I don't know if that's all, but I've got the lowest following on Twitter and, and um, what's the other one? Facebook, Twitter, doesn't, what's the other one? LinkedIn. Uh, maybe not, then, then all the guys do. Some of the guys I've alluded to, not by name but by reputation, have hundreds of thousands, if not millions. I have uh, ten or eleven thousand people on uh, uh, Twitter. I have forty-five or fifty thousand on Facebook, and I have uh, on LinkedIn. I've got I don't know eight or nine thousand. But because my my the, the what I am selling, if anything, is to be all you can be. From the time you wake up, and yes, I'm like this when I first wake up in the morning, and I'm like this when I first go to, when I go to sleep. I'm like this all the time, all the time. I'm on fire. I'm high on life, as Dave Asprey will. And I, I, I was biohacking before Dave was born. I was running 100-mile fucking marathons 40, more than 40 years ago. Back in my day in the early 70s, you were a man if you ran 100 miles and pissed blood. Because your body breaks down and you urinate blood when you, when you put your body into that, under that kind of stress. And now there's a whole industry called biohacking. I thought it was a joke. Sally said, we're at this. she says, Dan, you do all this stuff. I mean, people making money off this shit. But do you think biohacking is going to save your fucking lives? I got a bridge in Brooklyn, I can tell you. You're way beyond biohacking. As Brian QLA Rose would say, Dan's doing God's work, and you're beyond God. For most people in this room, nothing can ever help you. You're beyond it. You're past it. You've given up on life. And what's even more sad and pathetic, as my Irish partner would say, you've given up on your kids. For those of you that have kids that are roughly this age, you know what they look like. And for you uh, people that have kids that are many years older than that, you knew what, look back at your picture albums when they were happy, before you fucked them up. It doesn't matter if you're black, blue, yellow, it doesn't, this, this crosses across all ethnic groups. Wealth, risk, reward, not. It's a sad commentary. It is. And to date, I believe I'm the only person talking about it. Um, 
and um, people would ask me, would you talk about this if you were still selling shit? And I said, yeah. I went from the most expensive product on the internet to zero. I used to sell uh, DVDs like this for uh, $3,000. It cost me a nickel to produce. And people bought them. I could never figure it out. Why do people buy them? Do you realize that over 70% of the product that's purchased on the internet vis-a-vis -vis personal development is never used? Never. 70%. 40% is never opened. They never do the link to, it's never opened. Then why do you buy it? Because you're retarded. And I'm not taking anything about, away from the people that really are retarded. We're going to uh, uh, destroy as a human race quicker than the Greeks, quicker than the Romans. We are accelerating towards that end geometrically. Let me just say something about the, you save the world, guys. Remember, wealth is bleh. The first car that was ever produced in the world was an electric car in about 1840, 1850. Electric car! Do you think if we really wanted electric fucking cars, we couldn't do something about it since 1840? Now think about this, morons. Do you think that we could have done something in the last 177 years, the same age as this university about? The first car was electric. Why haven't we made more progress till Elon put his foot up the ass of the uh, uh, motor industry. Why? Because we don't want it. Now I'm here to tell you, this is, I have no evidence. I'm here to tell you we already have a cure for cancer. I'm here to tell you that we can make distilled water into petroleum. That one I have a little closer to the truth. I'm here to tell you most of the things that the farmers are searching for is, have already been solved. But Dan, why don't they? Well, because there's no profit in it. Now, I do admit that the profit formula is out of whack. That too's out of whack. So I'm just spend a couple minutes on that. Again, I, I started out by saying money's not everything. It's the only thing anybody keeps track of. But one of the reasons I believe that Warren and, and Bill and Melinda and uh, most of the big time rich guys. Uh, Sally and my, ourselves included, are giving a lot of what money away and um, helping charities because, as I tell the students or the kids that come to my uh, to hear me, the difference between two, 250 million and a billion, there's no noticeable difference. So if you had two, 250 million, I mean, this, and you had a billion or two or three billion, other than the amount of money you can give away, but as far as your own personal lifestyle, there isn't any difference. There isn't any. So the guys that have four, five, seven, ten, twelve to thirty billion and they're giving money away, fine, they're doing it, but I mean their lifestyle hasn't isn't changing any. It hasn't changed in many, many, many years. And it's you know, um, I didn't used to believe that <laughs> when I was much younger until I made a lot of money. Pre internet. I like to qualify it pre internet money when I made bricks and mortar money, which was a lot of money. And, um, but, so they're giving it away, and I think it's great that they're giving it away. I think it's great. And, and I know the things that Sally and I do, my wife, uh, but it doesn't make me feel good. After the initial gift and the fanfare, which we do all ours anonymously, so we don't get any fanfare, uh, it doesn't make you feel any better, any different. It doesn't erase any sins. If it did, I'd give, we'd give more. <laughs> it doesn't erase any sins, but it does help ultimately with your guilt. Now, Steve Jobs, God rest his soul, didn't get into Buddha until he, t he said that he had cancer. He wasn't going to live.
Before that, I don't know if he was an agnostic or an atheist, but anyway, he was one of those. And then he became, you know, a Buddhist, I guess. Our nun friends were here. Uh, Sister Superior would say, it doesn't matter how you've come to the right realization, Danny. The only thing that's important is that you've come to the realization. That's a load of shit as far as I'm concerned. That's a mumbo jumbo. You know, that's like Descartes saying tabula rasa. We're going to start with a clean slate. But the fact still remains that, you know, the charities exist on guilt. Religions exist on guilt. And I, I'm, I'm a little Catholic altar boy. I, you know, I'm, I'll be a Catholic till I die. But most people only go to church on Christmas. Or I forget what day. Or, and they go to temple on Rosh Hashanah or Hanukkah, whatever the holiest day is. Why? Guilt. Guilt. Merkel, uh, Merkel of uh, Germany is, is supporting... The EU, more or less, financially, because of guilt. Guilt. The world evolves around a lot of guilt. So if I can reduce your regrets, stroke guilt, you have to decide, is Dan the real messenger or is he the Antichrist? Well, there's plenty of people who think I'm the Antichrist, but I don't lose any sleep over that. Um, but I, I have a sore back from arthritis. My wife says I have a sore back because of hauling you assholes across the goal line like Forrest Gump in the movie, you know. But I never get tired of, of dragging you across the goal line because I know what you're capable of. The biggest misfit in this room, I know what you're capable of. I've had kids with 80 IQs to 180 IQs create billions And the ADIQ did better than the 180 IQ. Again, wealth, risk, reward, not. Why am I the only person that talks, other than I'm gauche, crass, whatever you want to call me, why am I the only guy out there or gal that talks about money? Because I'm the only son of a bitch that's created any with you dipshits. Just like you, lady. Just like you, ma'am. Just like you. I've drug your sorry asses across the goal line to create tens, hundreds of billions, billions! And it's fucking hard. And I'd never choose this profession again. Never. Just like I'd never live in a goddamn castle again. Do you have any idea what it is to live in a house that's 450 years old? Something breaks every five minutes! And it's never cheap! God. I would, I would, another thing I wouldn't do, I would, why did I build a golf course? Oh, God, what was I thinking, you fucking idiot? I built a goddamn golf course because I got tired of playing at St. Andrews. What do I, I, what am I, crazy? That's another thing. Don't do, don't build a golf course. Don't buy a 450-year-old storybook. See, I got in love with this whole storybook castle. It's got tourists like a Disneyland. What an idiot. I mean, what was I thinking? But it's tough dragging your kids across the goal line. It is. And all the stuff that, that it takes to do that, if that's what you want, is on my website for free. 99.9999% of all the people that have created all these billions, I've never met. You may be, there may be in the audience. I don't know. I, I've checked the numbers. We've verified numbers and done all that stuff. But I, I wouldn't know them. Uh, they don't have to send me pictures. I wouldn't know them. And most of the kids that have created this wealth, don't, they, they want anonymity. As Sally would say, they like the wealth, but they don't want any notoriety. And Sally, because she's a chartered accountant, tax specialist, she believes they're not paying taxes like they should. I don't know that. I cannot confirm nor deny that, and I won't. But if you don't, well, I hope they're doing the right thing, the right thing for them. And the right thing for them may not be to be paying taxes. But if you want the wealth bad enough, you can create it. It takes a huge sacrifice. And um, as I started to say, and I got off on a tangent, I just want my kids to respect me, not love me. 
And uh, the, um, because I want, unlike you, what your parents did, you leaving you in the sack of shit that you are now, I want my kids to be able to do what they want to do when they want to do it with their own money. You can't do that. Your parents didn't do that for you. Some of you will say, well, my parents didn't stress monetary wealth. <clears throat> In my humble opinion, and there's nothing humble about me, it's because they had no wealth. The market to make this kind of sacrifice is one tenth of one, one hundredth of a percent. 740,000 people of the 7.4 billion on the planet can make that kind of sacrifice, is my experience. That eliminates a lot of people. Most. For example, I'll be 72 in a few weeks. I still work 50, 60 hours a week. I don't even consider it work. Because the other thing is, just like you're married to the wrong person, you had kids with the wrong person, the job you have, you're there for the wrong reasons. 87% Gallup poll came up with a, a deal in 2015 worldwide. 87% of the people on the planet don't like what they do, don't like who they are. 87%! Why do you do what you do? Remember, we're talking about wealth versus risk reward, not. Because, well, same reason you stay with the old lady. That's what they used to call women in the old days. They don't do that anymore. I don't know. I've had people, I'd kick the bitch to the curb if I thought I could do better. Jesus Christ, what kind of shit is that? I'd kick the bitch to the curb if I thought I could do better. And I've heard the same from ladies. But they say it nicer. They say it much nicer. Oh, I could live without him. That's the same thing as kicking the bitch to the curb. But women talk nicer. But the my most successful, the women can multitask and men can't. Like, if men had babies, we'd only have a population of about 3 million people on the planet. If men had had babies. Men get, women know, a, men gets a, a man gets a uh, cold, he's got pneumonia, you know. He can't do anything. Women are the tougher sex. And I point to my Yorkshire Chartered Accountant wife back here, who's also a psychologist, who's also a cordon bleu chef, who's also a uh, skipper for a, a boat she sailed across the Atlantic. She can do all that shit. I barely, you know, I barely can chew gum and walk. And since I got two new knees, this is the longest I've been on my feet since I got my two new knees. And for those of you that can do everything humanly possible, not to get new knees, do it. Because they lie to you. I don't walk the same. I can't put my feet. I got two new knees because I wanted to climb Everest before I'm 75. Unless Allah does something for me, I'm never going to be able to climb Everest because I can't. My knees don't work the same. Because you, real knees go this way and this way. Artificial knees only go this way. I'm three-eighths of an inch taller, though with new knees, which I'm already tall. I don't need, I didn't need that. You know, that, artificial hip, shoulders, collarbone. I have no bicep. I mean, they're running out of parts. They, can, uh, they could take my heart because I have nothing pumping to it, I mean, other than ice water. <laughs> How many in the audience, um, uh, by a show of hand, have children? Poor bastards. <laughs> God, I don't mean Jesus Christ. Well, anyway, we'll just skip that next section then. Um, the, um, okay, now remember, wealth, risk, reward, not. Now, there, you, there was a book written in, in the late 60s called I'm Okay, You're Okay by a psychiatrist named Stein, S-T-E-I-N. Please don't read it. Okay? And it basically said whatever you, this was the beginning of the end in my judgment. This, I'm, whatever you do is okay, and whatever I do is okay. You piss on my foot, and I piss on yours. Everybody's humbaya. Well, where I come from, if you pissed on somebody's foot, you got hit with a brick. If you were lucky. If you weren't lucky, you got stabbed in the chest or shot in the head. But now everybody's that way. I'm okay, you're okay. Cha-cha-cha. 
we've gone from gunboat diplomacy two, three hundred years ago to now, you know, you know, you can, you, people would rather have a thesis in their mouth before they'd say it. And the educational system is, is adapted to that. And um, the, although my daughter was born in Britain and my two sons uh, star started their education here in Britain, um, they, uh, we went to the United States and to, uh, I guess, formalize their education. And, um, but it's all over. It's in Europe. Um, the only place that it's not is in Russia. That's not the only place. But the only place that's got a lot of people is in Russia. Russia, and I'm not, uh, I'm not promoting this as a, a plus. I'm just telling you, Russia still knows how to take care of business in that regard, this PC crap. When somebody gets kidnapped in Russia, what happens? The Russian Gestapo, secret police, whatever they're called, go in, they kill all the kidnappers, and unfortunately, they kill nor normally a lot of the poor kids that got kidnapped. But you see a lot less of that in Russia because they know how the Russian government is going to deal with it. And here we, uh, you know, try to talk them, talk them out of it or whatever. I'm not sure what we do, what we do. But virtually uh, the, the whole planet is, is, is gravitated that way. Um, now, in August of 2014, I said that oil was, was a hundred, $120 a barrel. I said oil was going to be, and they were predicting $200 a barrel. I said oil will be at $40 a barrel before it's at 200 I made a big hoopla about it. In February last year, oil was at $26 a barrel, and it's currently in the middle 40s, I guess. Now, smart people knew what I do, knew. But I have nothing to sell, and I have nothing to suck you into the vortex, so I don't mind telling you. The other people that knew that have something to sell you. New cars, new this, new that, blah, blah, blah. So nobody else said it. Do you realize that for about the last four million years, the planet Earth, we're 13.7 billion years old, supposedly, and uh, Homo sapien or some form of us have been walking around a couple hundred thousand years. We have between 10 and 15,000 times more energy per square meter on the planet Earth than is required simply from the sun. I'll say that again slow for the melon heads. We have between 10 and 15,000 times more energy than is required by us per square meter that naturally comes from the sun. Now, how long have we known that, Mr. Pena? Oh, about 100 years, more or less. Uh, well, how can... Uh, I don't understand, Mr. Benya. If everybody knows that shit, Jesus Christ. I'm not the only person on the planet that knows how to connect the dots. I'm not the only person on the planet that knows that personal development is an amorphous of bullshit. <laughs> I'm not the only one on the planet that knows that they're looking at an audience, if I was selling personal development, that I'm not going to change anybody's life in here more than two to four weeks. Then why do they do it to you? Profit motive. And that's where I have a problem with wealth, risk, reward, not. I think making money off fools is a sin. That's where I cross the line. And there's not many lines in my life, believe me, but that is one of them. I think it's like, it's like beating up on people in wheelchairs. I'm also against that. I'm also, if you're, you know, you're, uh, you're um, they don't call it, uh, what do they call it? Uh, not, they don't call it disabled, disadvantaged. Now when you're fat, you're not fat, you're weight disadvantaged. What the fuck? You're not short now, now you're height disadvantaged. What the? Who came up with all this shit? When we were uh, recently, hey, Lord ass, come here. You're not supposed to say that. Oh. Hey, four eyes, come out. You're not supposed to say, 
What the hell can you say? But we're so sensitive now. And I have my glasses in my pocket because I wear glasses. We're so sensitive now that we can't talk that way. Doesn't make mean that they don't have a lard ass, does it? Doesn't mean that they don't wear glasses, does it? So I look at it where I came and we're being disingenuous. It's like calling you handsome. You know, what the fuck? What a goddamn lie is that? One of my Harvard mentees, billion guy, billionaire guy, double Harvard degrees, he says, Dan says what we only dare to think. It's not that you've never thought this stuff, is it? Or you are, then you are retarded. No, I'm, you know, it's, you've thought a lot of the stuff that I've said, you've thought. Maybe you didn't know that the first electric car was back in 1840, 1845. But now that I've told you, why don't we have a lot more electric cars? The only reason we have more now is because Elon Musk put his foot up the ass of the auto industry. And there is not a conspiracy for the bright and the rich against you. There isn't. Although it would be easy because you're pretty stupid. The truth is, and the thing that I think is sinful, is that not more people are talking about it. I used to teach at B schools, and one of the first things that, we're still wealth, blah, blah, blah. how many classes have you had in selling a business? I used to ask the students. These are MBA students. Nobody raised their hand. How many classes have you had on um, buying a business? Nobody raised their hand. How many classes have you had on uh, leadership? Nobody raised their hand. And then I used to turn to the dean of the school of business, and you call this a, a learning or a higher education a business university? The three basics of business, buying, selling, and leading, and you haven't taken one fucking class in them? Only recently, in the last four or five years, have the B schools in um, Ivy League schools started a class on selling and buying. And they're taught by a, a CPA, which is like a chartered accountant, who's never bought or sold a business. Yet the, the um, descriptions, you know, on the book, when you get people to endorse your book, everybody endorses everybody's book, and then you endorse my book back and forth. They've got all these accolades from these guys saying well, what a great book it is but the son of a bitch has never bought or sold a goddamn business. Now, to me, that's disingenuous. To me, that's taking advantage of the system and its flaws. So I'm up here running around the world on my own nickel telling people because it's not right. And I don't care if you live or die tonight. Just don't do it on my estate, you know. It's wrong. There's a flaw. The system is fucked up. The socioeconomic milieu of the educational, financial educational system has been boosted for many, 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 many years. And I, I, I thank uh, the university here for giving me the opportunity. And they more or less knew what I was going to talk about. Not exactly, but more or less. Uh, and, but it's, it's, it shouldn't be any shock, because I say some pretty shocking things, actually. Bloody shocking. But it's the truth. Nobody's ever accused me of being a liar. None of the guys in the industry that you bought their books and go to their and listen to their podcast has ever sued me for slander. Bring it on. I'd love that. Nobody. Why? Because I'm telling the truth. A couple of the big guys say, oh, Dan's just being Dan. Now, what does that mean? Well, I'm just telling the truth. That's all I'm doing. And I had to have the privilege of being able to tell it here. Although I'm, I'm told we have wine and hors d'oeuvres later. Canapes. Hors d'oeuvres, as they say in Scotland. Uh, Oxford didn't give us any of that kind of shite, you know. I know. I mean, and, and, the, uh, and I'm still waiting for my uh, Rhodes Scholarship uh, thing from, the, again, they, nobody laughed. No, they didn't see the humor in it. They just didn't. Now, I couldn't, have got in, I couldn't have got into any school other than the school I got into, a school you've got to explain about. 
uh, and um, but um, many of the schools. That's why I, I, I get joy out of talking at schools that uh, I couldn't have never got in, uh, and they let me flap my mouth, uh, you know, um, with more or less no uh, constraints. Now, there's one final bit about risk reward not. Now, we all know what you should have looked like up there, and. When you were the kid, you did look that way. Then what happens? Our parents, life. Now, I alluded to about 20, 30 minutes ago, we all have an uncle, a cousin, or somebody that made a fool of himself investing money, doing something stupid. It's like your old uh, uncle that takes his clothes off at Christmas and when he has too much to drink. We've all got one of those guys in the closet someplace. Okay? And the results, vis-a-vis -vis measuring risk versus reward, We've got somebody that's lost the family fortune or almost lost the family fortune, etc. We've all got that. And to a great degree, that has kept many of us from uh, venturing outside our comfort zone. Venturing outside our comfort zone. When I realized many uh, decades ago now that uh, what the comfort zone was, and I had the privilege of my mentor, Jim Newman, who wrote the book, Release Your Breaks. Again, don't read it. But it, it tells you the story of a, a man for those of us that are old enough in this room, maybe I'm the only one that you could you used to be able to uh, drive your automobile with an emergency brake on. Now when you put it in park, I haven't driven in 25, 30 years, but when you put it in drive, the emergency brake automatically comes off. But in the old days, you had to undo the emergency brake. And if you've uh, uh, ever driven any old cars, you know that. But when you drive with your emergency brake on, wh what is it? It's bad for the tires. It's bad for the differential. It's bad for the universal. It's bad for, the, it's bad for everything. And then when you take the emergency brake off, you, it's like Star Wars, Woo! you go into uh, like uh, hyperspace, you surge ahead. Most of you have been raised with your emergency brakes on. Most of you have been raised with um, uh, bubble wrap life. You know, they want to protect you. And unfortunately, protecting you, um, I use the example, how many of us had a bicycle with trainer wheels on it growing up? Trainer wheels, you know, little side wheels? When you take the trainer wheels off, what happens? You fall over on your melon head, and your mommy and daddy come, oh, poor baby, poor baby, and they put the trainer wheels back on. Well, you've still got your trainer wheels on. You've still got your trainer wheels on. On top of it, you've, been, you've got bubble wrap around you. I had a um, snowflake producer uh, I was interviewing, uh, he was interviewing me about the TV show that they were talking to me about doing. A young Englishman, that's why I bring up the exam. Oxbridge, Etonian, in his early 30s. And he said, I, uh, actually, Mr. Penner, uh, it's hard for me to uh, grasp uh, how you, the shock value you have in your seminars. I said, really? Really? <laughs> And he says, uh, how, how, how do we evoke this kind of response out of these, these, these uh, kids? And I said, well, with the greatest respect, they're your age. Well, how do you? And then so I looked around the room, the other and everybody's got an assistant executive, something, seven or eight people in the room. And then I jumped up from my chair, and I grabbed him by his collar and started screaming at him, spitting on his face. He started crying. I said, just like that, snowflake. I mean, they, didn't, they decided not to do my show, actually, but <laughs> the, uh, um, but when I was growing up, that wasn't, uh, that kind of stuff was not that out of the ballpark. When you didn't like somebody, you punched him in the face. My cousin went to jail for stabbing a guy 17 times because he told, said something about his girlfriend had a big ass. She did, but, but you know, be that as by the grace of God, the guy didn't die. And Ronnie, Ron Jr., his son will be watching this. Uh, you know, uh, I'm using this as a positive example, uh, and it turned his life around. But now, if this is I hope is a stretch, they could spit on your wife, and you wouldn't do a goddamn thing. They could say your wife is a filthy slut whore. And you don't do a goddamn thing. What the fuck happened? 
and your wife will pull you by the arm. Oh, honey, we don't want any trouble. Get away, bitch, and now fucking hit him with a brick. <laughs> and you're hoping that she pulls you a little harder so you don't have to show like you had a pair. What the fuck happened? Is every man in fucking Britain a meaty mouth weenie? Almost all. There's a few of us. Dis oh, disgraceful, actually. Shocking. Uh, oh, shocking. Are we going to do anything about it? No. Now, I happen to know Donald Trump in another lifetime, and I don't agree with everything he said or says, or will say, for that matter, but I was one of the first to publicly endorse him, and I said he was going to fucking rock the world. Because he doesn't give a shit if he's a second-term president. And him being elected in America and Brexit and all these other things that have happened, we're fed up. We're fed up with politicians being lying bastards. We're fed up. There was a movie called um, Network in the early 70s. We're fed up and we're not going to take it anymore. Jesus Christ, look at what has to happen, though, for us to get fed up. We should have done this 40 years ago. I also had the privilege of meeting Mrs. Thatcher. And uh, the, uh, they throw the old bitch out on her ass. Uh, I never met Churchill. I'm old, but not that old. Uh, and guys, gals, I mean, the world's fucked up. And anybody that tells you any different, it, give me, if it's not addictive, give me some of that shit and let me smoke it. When I was 40, 50 years old, I said I wanted to use heroin when I was 80. I'll be 72 in a few weeks, and 80 seems awful close to me now. <laughs> so I've, I've moved it to 90 or older. <laughs> but I used to say, because a lot of the guys, that my best friend is serving life for murder from when I was a kid. And some people say, you should have been there, Dan. I was a troublemaker. I know it's hard for you to believe, but I was a troublemaker. I was the instigator. And uh, the, um, I have a vague recollection of that. I can't, you know, as you get older, you, you know, brain cells die, etc. Synapse don't work as well. Um, but I, I, did, I, I didn't know how to stir the pot. Some people say I still do. The, um, okay, so now, wealth, risk, reward. Okay, now we've, we, we've talked about how can I, if I want to, save the world, how can I make money? I want to end this on a positive note, even though you might not want to make any money. But if you can save the world, bear with me. How do we make some, some shekels, some rubles, or as my Jewish friends say, some Jewish coupons? How do we do this? Well, one, you don't need an education to do it, per se, with degrees. <coughs> Doesn't hoit. But you don't need it. It's not a requirement. Okay. Uh, uh, number two, if you're not doing something that you love, forget about it. I tell the kids now, figure out a way to change the lives of a billion people and you'll become a multi-billionaire. Change the lives of a billion people, you'll become a multi-billionaire. But if you don't love what you do, it gets old. It's like that bitch you're going to kick to the curb. Okay. I mean, if you don't love it, I don't consider the 50, 60 hours, uh, hours a week I put in now as work. When I was putting 100, 120 hours a week, I didn't consider it work. Elon Musk just said uh, three or four weeks ago, give me a guy that works 100 hours, even if he's only average, will accomplish more in four months than a guy that works 40 hours a whole year. When you talk about working 100 hours a week now, people look at you like you're brain dead. Elon Musk, or excuse me, uh, Bebos of Amazon, to be considered for a promotion, considered 80 hours a week in the quarter prior. Considered to be in a, a top five or six of those considered 85 hours a week the prior quarter. To get a promotion, 100 hours a week. They don't pay a dividend. They're the second, third, or fourth largest company by market capitalization on the planet. And they just bought um, 
Whole Foods. And now he's going back bricks and mortar, which I find amusing myself. He's a smart guy. And he, and I'm not saying this, but he makes you work like a dog. A dog. Google had the same model. Microsoft had the same model. I can go down the line. But now they're big conglomerates. For those of you that are, have, uh, how many in the, uh, in the room, no, no, no. If you started a business on eBay or whatever business and you've gone from zero to 5,000 revenue, that's geometric growth because you've gone from zero to 5,000. If you've gone from zero to 50,000 or 100,000, that's geometric growth. That's no different than Bebo's, Elon, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs. But then what happens? You start worrying about the money you made. And you stop playing to win and you start playing to lose, not to lose. And there's no, there's, there's no comparison between playing not to lose and playing to win. You start coveting your assets like an old hen sitting on her eggs. Those of you that have started a business understand geometric growth. The only thing I did is I never stopped for 10 years. 100, 120 hours a week, sleeping at bus stations, sleeping at airports. The other day, my wife and I were at the San Francisco airport. We missed our plane going up north to see uh, one of our business partners. And uh, so Sally is going wherever you look to find hotels. And I said, well, I, you know, I just sleep here at the airport. Now, if you knew my wife, but no, we're not sleeping in the airport. <laughs> so anyway, we, went, we found a hotel, right? And then they closed the fucking bar on us. And uh, we convinced them that still works. <laughs> that still works. Somehow we convinced the guy to keep the bar open. Keep the bar open. But I mean, um, you know, I've taken the train. I've taken uh, buses. I've done all that stuff. Um, but now you can't find anybody... They're more interested in what their benefits are going to be, as I alluded to about 45 minutes ago. But if you don't love what you do, guys, and if your kids or grandkids aren't finding jobs that they love what they do, they're stuffed. I still love this. I never do it again, though. I never start over again. But now I've got momentum, the flywheel effect. I've created way in excess of $50 billion with meatheads just like you. And there's a sense of gratification that I can't describe to you. A meathead like you. Can you imagine? It's hard to believe. Just look at this. I mean, just like him. From 13 to 77 is my demographics. 13 to 77. 80 IQ to 180 IQ. Black, green, purple, you name it. We got them. By the way, I started bragging because uh, we did our gene, not genealogy, what do you call it, uh, DNA, what's it called? DNA. I'm 6.6% .6 black, not Ethiopian black, we all are. I'm, I'm a brother, 6.6%. .6 and people started to uh, write me, hey, you're my nigga. Gee, that sounds good. Now, if he had said that before, I would have punched him in the face, but I mean, and uh, uh, my, my, uh, my aunt, God rest her soul, she's ni she was 98, and we, we go visit her, we went to visit her every two or three years. Why are you visiting me? Because you're 95, 98, 98. Oh, and then when I told her she's Dan, at 98, I don't need to find out I'm black, she says to me. I said, Aunt Stella, yeah, don't worry. And then she died, not because of the black, but <laughs> they started planning her 100th birthday. Why did you tell her about the 100th birthday? I'm telling my cousin. And then she dies. She looked healthy as, I mean, as you guys for sure. And then she died. But uh, as Sally would tell, she she's, knew my mom, my dad. Somehow they've deluded themselves and I'm an angel. Two things I've never been called, angel or a liar. But the, the nuns think I'm an angel, so maybe they're right. Maybe they're right. Okay, so now how do you make money? You need to love something. So it's not work. You got to be able to put in long, long hours and not consider it work. And you've got to make a lot of sacrifices. You can't be going to your sweet 16, whatever. You can't be going to, I mean, that's just, there's not time for that. There's not time. 
If Elon Musk and all these guys and myself, we all slept in our office the first 10 years of our businesses. Slept in the office. You know, success leaves clues, kids. And they're all tough as nails. Some of you will say they're ruthless. I would have to tend to agree with some, <laughs> some of the guys are ruthless. Some people have, you know, some people have said, I started the same Dell Corporation started. Uh, if I had been in the computer business, I would have been the first trillionaire on the planet. But they also say, Dan, you're a weenie. You're too easy. Now, these are the big boys. If I'm too easy and I'm a weenie, which equates to a snowflake, where in the fuck does that leave you? Whoops. If I'm a weenie stroke snowflake, where does that leave you? Some of you will say, have been raised, money's dirty. We don't talk about money, and that's because you don't have any, but we don't talk about money. That's not for us. For those of you that saw the movie Rudy, there's a, a great scene when he says, we're Rudikers. Rudikers, don't go to Notre Dame. You're Rudy, blah, blah, blah. Okay, many of you have been told that, either directly or indirectly. It's interesting, Sally had an uh, uncle die a couple years ago, and we went to uh, the funeral. And um, we, Sally and I argue about who came up was poor. I now admit she was poorer than I was. And she talks about uh, living in a caravan. Her mother will say she can't possibly remember the caravan. Really? She was so little. Really? You remember every negative fucking thing your parents ever said since the second trimester in her fat belly. Her mother says she can't possibly remember that caravan where they all live like sardines. But she remembers it like this morning. So every negative piece of shit that you've ever been exposed to, you've got back there in the back recess of that little pea brain of yours. But you can still do it. Find something you love. Science, find something you're passionate about. And then work your ass off and practice, practice, practice. There's more money out there right now than ever in the history of time. Interest rates, it's like they're giving away money. The interest rates are so low. And on my website, if free cash flow meets debt service, that's it. That's all you need to know. Free cash flow meets debt service. Most of you wouldn't know a deal if it bit you in the groin. That's why you can't get them financed. That's why they don't work. On my website, there's how do I get the fucking money, one link, and deal flow. How do I get deal flow? Why are those two links the least clicked upon on my website? Because if you know how to get the money and you know where to get a deal, then you've got no more excuses. So hardly anybody ever looks at those links. You would rather read 400 books and just jerk around and pretend and be a wannabe. That's a sad commentary. 30, 40 years ago, people took it seriously. People took it seriously. Okay. Does anybody not remember this growing up? Okay. If love got the job done, most parents would have produced higher performers. It doesn't. If love got the job done, kids, you wouldn't be sitting in here. But that's what you were told. Love doesn't get the goddamn job done. So they lied to you. If your adult child needs a safe space to avoid offensive words, you failed as a parent. <clears throat> they have sp safe spaces on campuses yet now. 
They used to stand me in the corner with a dunce cap. And then beat me. I was the la as I told um, Professor Wheeler last night, I was the last student in the Los Angeles City School System that received corporal punishment, meaning a fucking beating, in May of 1963. I was the last human being that got beat legally in high school. And at my 50 year reunion, as Sally will attest, they came and they said, we want to do this little mock thing about um, corporal punishment. I'm not, you're not going to beat me now. I'm 68 years old. There's nobody in here going to beat me again. No, no. We want you to beat. And they handed me this panel. Who do you want me to hit? And it was a retired policeman that I went to high school with who was an also a bad kid in high school. But I was the last person to get a beating legally. But they used to stand me in the corner. Because I was an outrageous child, they told me. Your, you didn't do better because your, your parents don't even, didn't even know what this meant. Psychology of the high performer. Some of you, by the look, you look like deers in the headlights right now. Some of you, the, the look at you, you don't know what it means now. 85% of your financial success is due to the, your personality and the ability to communicate, and negotiate, and lead. Shock, shockingly... Only 15% is due to technical knowledge. The things you go to school to learn don't mean dick. It's not what happens to you in life. It's how you handle what happens to you in life that makes a difference. Here to four, go to another podcast on the left. If you don't connect the experiences, you might as well not have gone. And virtually none of the guys out there connect the experiences because they don't have any experiences. Now, this is a 17-year-old phenom. Didn't go to high school. Didn't go to junior. No, he didn't went to junior high. I take him from Lithuania. Multi-millionaire. Supports his two twin brothers, his uh, retard mother. No, uh, I mean his mother uh, and his dad. 17. I got him a little late in life. This kid. This kid, 17, I got him a little late. No high school, no nothing. Just closed a $3 million deal, healthcare deal. 17. Whoops. What am I doing wrong here? Shit, this is important too. Oh, no. Okay. These two kids. Got this one at 13, this one at 15. When he's 13, he made $100,000 online and his father thought he was doing drugs. They just turned down last year $20 million for 5% of their company. They made a mistake. They should have taken the $20 million, but they're smarter than me now. They're smarter than me, okay? They look cocky, don't they? <laughs> Fucking weenies. The week he graduated from Oxford, he came to me, make a long story short, he left, he went and did what I told him, he made 400 million at 20. This is you. You hang out with monkeys, your life becomes a circus. Kind of looks like some of you, actually. The first method of estimating the intelligence of a ruler is to look at the men he has around him. If it, it, it sounds like you didn't interview them properly. If you interview them properly and they realize that they're no, nothing more, they're going through a, what I call a beauty contest, as the scripts are on my site, um, I tell them next, fuck off. I, I wouldn't fuck with them. All right, bro, but the, because I do have five banks. Okay, well then tell them to fuck off. Okay. Okay. Well then, well, remember, cash flow needs to cover debt service. If there is no cash flow, or if the margins are too thin, I like 20 to 40 percent margins. Why do I like 20 to 40 percent gross margins? Because none of us can manage well. As, as long as I've been doing this, I'm still not a great manager. 
So, um, the, uh, but if there is no money, you got to go to another industry and you got to somehow cajole yourself into loving it. But uh, uh, I personally am a whore. I love the one I'm with. I've been like that since I'm a young boy. It, it, it stood me in good stead all these years. Uh, I mean, you got to find something else. I mean, thin margins, retail, that kind of thing is really hard. And especially for your first deal, you want it to be as easy as you can. Well then, well then again, you got to find something that it is. I have, I, I can't make thin margin business heavy margins. I can't. So I mean, you got to initially to start with something else. How do you find these people? What do you look for? <clears throat> well, I mean, um, I've never found anybody like me, but the. Um, <laughs> Uh, no, um, you, you want somebody that is, um, you can give a smart person a task and he'll figure out how to do it. Really, truly gifted, smart people you don't have to manage. They manage themselves. Uh, and so you want people high energy, um, enthusiastic, and believe in you. Uh, you can teach it to the rest. You, with great difficulty, but it is possible. You have to take in the corruption factor, uh, whether it's 5% or uh, the, uh, we just did a deal in uh, Asia, um, alternative energy deal where corruption was as high as 50% in one of the countries. And uh, you have to factor that in. Some banks will factor it in and work with you and some won't. Um, and you s sometimes you'll say that you'll just walk away from that country. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a personal moral issue. Um, but if you can't finance it, then you got to walk away. I mean, as long as everybody in the deal understands it, because remember, this is a, no money, no, not no money, not your money. This is OPM, other people's money, and other people. So if you can finance the deal, and everybody's aware that the king, what you call it, gets 20% of the deal off the top or whatever, and everybody's aware of that. But what you can't do is where corruption is part of the deal and you try to keep it a secret. If everybody understands it, that's, one, that's fine. But you, it has to be because uh, up until uh, 2002 or 2004, I mean, Germany, you could pay bribes and just count it as an expense. You can't anymore. So it has to be above, it has, that has to be above board. You, can't, you, can't, you cannot lie to your financial institution that's financing the deal. Everybody has to be on the same um, playing field. The, um, Warren Buffett and I have one thing in common. We both took the uh, preliminary uh, Dale Carnegie selling class, selling program. About uh, He took it in, uh, I took it in 70-something, uh, and he took it in 60-something. Okay, but now the kids tell me, the you, my mentees tell me, that the uh, Wolf of Wall Street guy uh, course is pretty good. Uh, but I haven't taken it, so I can't tell you that. But I mean, um, it's, it's, sales is a numbers game. And uh, the, uh, when you were selling me, uh, or when I was selling you, the, the first 15 or 20 no's were like water off a duck's back. And I used to have a 94.6% close ratio when I sold property. 94.6. You were either bought or died. And I saw many, uh, and I had a similar closing ratio uh, when I uh, sold insurance. But it's about setting expectations. I had a sales manager named Kelly Norwood, who was a defrocked um, lawyer from Bolt Hall, which is Berkeley, California, uh, University of California, Berkeley. And he said, uh, and I still remember this. He was an old guy from Tennessee. He says, Pina, young boy like you ought to close every motherfucker that walks through the door. 100%. I didn't know any better. And I closed 94.6, and I was I sick to my stomach about the little one, ones that wiggled off the hook. And I trained many a sales staff the same way. But that same story, and it's not a source of truth. If your expectations, but most of us set low expectations. Why? Because your parents set low expectations, and their parents set low expectations. You set high expectations, assuming you got a good product. And um, you sell from the front. I used to be the first guy in the door and the last guy to leave. 
Monday through Sunday. The first in the door and the last leave. When my two, uh, our two children uh, were uh, selling uh, in between undergraduate and graduate school, I told them this be the first in and the last out and make 300 cold calls and you do great. And they both led the nation. Two different deals. They both led the nation in two different deals. And that's, but that's, you know, not going with your mates. You're not windsurfing. You're not this. You're not blah. High expectations, what sales is all about. Is it about leverage? Yeah, it's about, well, leverage of other people, other people's money. No, you don't have to have any knowledge. A monkey like you can do it. I can't begin to tell you all the books and all. I mean, it's just a waste of fucking time. You're just procrastinating because you're afraid. You're afraid. Okay, go ahead. Uh, where do you get your advice from? Get my who from? Advice. Fight? Advice. Your... I don't get any advice. No. no. My mentors are all dead. Deed. My three mentors. I've had, actually had five, but they're all deed. No. No, I'm, 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 the, uh, I'm the Valhalla of knowledge now. I don't, um, and, I, and this sounds uh, awful and braggadocious, it's meant to be, I don't give a fuck what your opinion is, I don't give a fuck who your boss's opinion is, I don't give a fuck if, who, what Allah thinks. When you've been around as long as I have and done a thousand deals, I stopped counting at a thousand. There's not one set of circumstances known to man that can occur that I haven't experienced. And I happen to be extremely knowledgeable about the internet, I'm ashamed to say. You can't find an old git that knows more about the fucking net than me. In fact, you can't hardly find a young git. I failed at 22 deals last year. Do I look like it? Did I lose any sleep over it? The only way you can fail is you stop swinging at the plate. You can't hit it for six, kids, unless you're on the pitch. Let's get this right. On the pitch. On the crease. Yeah. On the pitch, on the crease, swinging the bat. I never stop swinging. Never, no matter what happens. Never. And um, the, um, it's who you surround yourself with. I don't have any friends. You know, um, I see uh, the couple I have, I see every, at a funeral or a, that's it. You fly alone. You have to learn how to be lonely. You have to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Ninety percent, more or less, uh, like what they do. Ten percent are just transaction junkies, like I am. They're whores. They love the one they're with. They used to tell, say about me when I was a young man: if you want a red dress, pen you'll stand under a red light. If you want a green dress, pen you'll stand under a green light. Uh, I just like to do deals and. Um, but it gets easier. It's easier in the beginning if you like what you do because it gets old. It's like an old tart. Excuse me, ladies. You can't stand to look at her pretty soon. You know, they get coyote ugly. You want to eat your fucking arm off. To, uh, afraid she's going to wake up in the middle of, you know. Forget about it. I mean, it's easier finding something that you like to do. It just is. I mean, the, uh, see, if I equate, I equate it to a bad relationship, see, most of you are in bad relationships, and you don't know how to get out, or you know how to get out, but you don't have the balls to get out, or you don't have the uh, nipples to get out, whatever you want to call it. I don't give a shit what you call it. And because, uh, you know what a bad, uh, bad relationship is like? It's shit, isn't it? God Almighty, not again by him. But, well, it's the same exact, it's the same model. It's life. It's the life model. Uh, well, my second mother at dinner uh, uh, a couple months ago, she's 95, told me um, about her husband. I didn't have the balls to get out of the marriage. They were married four billion years. She says, at 95, I didn't have the balls to get out. Now, I know more than one woman in this motherfucking room can relate to that, so don't you lie to me, you bitches. Now, now isn't that a hell of a fucking time? 
at 95. I'm going to say something else. It's going to be shocking, actually. Just bloody shocking. Most of you are mistakes in this fucking room. Better that you dribble down the inside of your mama's leg. Most of you are bloody mistakes. And when you get the mommies and daddies in the goddamn room, what, now what I find shocking is when a mother and a grandfather... And the daughter's in there, and they say, and the mother says she was a mistake. And the, and the little 15, 16 year old, I always knew it because they know. They know. Not just because they're nine years apart, that kind of shit, that's easy. You're all bloody mistakes on top of it. And down deep inside, you miserable cunts, you know it. And if they didn't like you, and I can get off on being um, adopted. Oh, that's a whole other fucking deal. I mean, an adopted kid never gets over it their whole life. Not only did oh, not only did they, they they didn't want you. They left you in a basket in a fucking mission. Oh, I can go on and on and on. You want to know why you're all fucked up? Now, who's saying this at seminars? Nobody. And they want you to buy their fucking little DVD. And I love when they go to the back of the room and they sell you shit. Do they still do that? <laughs> Fuck. I'd be embarrassed. I just got invited by the big, big uh, muckety muck to go to Vegas next year. And they told Cat, oh, Mr. Pena, uh, how's he going to sell from the back of the room if he doesn't have anything to sell? And Cat, one of my girls, doesn't understand. Sell from the back of the room? And then on, uh, on uh, Valentine's Day, 60% off. Why do you buy, come on, guys. Why do you buy that shit? What was it worth the day before Valentine's Day? Because you're retarded. You engage in self-sabotaging activities because you don't think you deserve it. And you're right, you don't. And that's why I got a sore back, honey, dragging all these sons of bitches across the goal line. Next. Well, if you're following the model, you, need all, you don't need all that shit. You got to find a deal that the cash flow, free cash flow, uh, covers um, debt service. You're not paying the board. You're not paying anybody. You're not paying the accountants. You're not paying the lawyers because they're on a delayed fee basis. And the delayed fee basis is nothing more than the private equity basis. So when, and if you looked at my site, you fucking morons, you know there's a script there that says uh, uh, you're uh, interviewing an ABC accounting firm. Of course, you do business with uh, blah, 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 private equity. He says, yes, we do. Well, then you're familiar with the, the format. We don't pay the fucking fees until the deal's done and financed. But see, you don't have the balls to say that, even if I give you a script. You don't have the testosterone of whatever women have to have. They have testosterone too, don't they, women? Yeah, uh, you know. You can't even say that to them. And if you don't have the balls to say it to them, you don't deserve You'd stay fucking poor. Like Bill Gates says, being born poor is not your fault. Dying poor is your fault. You're just, you're just jerking off. This is a fucking procrastination. You want to make a fucking sacrifice? I showed you those teenage kids. You know why kids are much better than old gits? Because they don't have the fucking baggage that you gave them. They know failure just because, well, they know the, the option's not a failure. Okay, bam, bam, in their data bank. Uh, they know failure because it's, uh, they know how to do Webster's Dictionary on Google fuck. But they haven't, they haven't experienced it because they've decided not to experience it. 30 years ago when I was interviewed by the Financial Times, oil went from $40 a barrel to 8 and they said, uh, actually, Mr. Penna, uh, is it true that uh, you, uh, you've decided not to participate in the energy depression? I said, yes, we've taken the decision, actually. The board has taken the decision that uh, we are not going to participate. Even though 10,000 energy companies have gone boost, that's correct. Even though 10,000 energy companies have gone boost. Is it true, Mr. Penna, that you've said that jet lag is for cunts? I said, yes, jet lag is for cunts. And the FT just writes it down like, the morons!
And then one of my ass bandit partners, meaning sex hounds, I don't know what the right terminology now, he said, we also taken the decision to screw up the arse, all the people that interview Mr. Penner. You're number two. She's right. Then she looks up. Uh, then she, um, fucking idiot. She became editor. I don't use her name. She became bloody editor of one of the five big newspapers. And she would have taken it up the arse by that kid. He was a good looking kid. <laughs> Teddy. Look kind of like you. Good evening, Mr. Penny. Well, stand up, movie star. Show him. Correct. You know the answer already, Teddy. Okay. When this kid came to me, he couldn't speak English. He couldn't speak fucking English. He's fucking Bulgarian, right? If uh, wherever that is. Now he sounds like fucking James Bond. Anyway. Okay. The first question. Uh, was um, uh, oh uh, the, the one of the the themes behind the QLA model is motivated seller. We would rather the, uh, the the guy have just have a stroke, and he's paralyzed, and the wife's spitting up blood from emphysema. That's a perfect, that's our perfect motivated seller. But we don't always get them that way. And believe me, if you look hard enough, you'll find them just like that. I've sat at tables when they're filling up handkerchiefs full of fucking blood and we can't get the fucking paperwork signed quick enough. Anyway, how do we make them motivated if they're not motivated is his real question. Most people, 55 to 70, that don't have a succession plan, meaning they got, their kids don't want the business. They wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. Okay? So, and they know that. The parents or the dad or the mom, whoever's running the business. So how do you motivate? Well, you have to motivate them through example. You have to show them other businesses that are like theirs, similar to theirs, which they have sold preferably to you, and you can show them how they exited four or five years later and they made six, eight, ten times more money. That's the best example. It's one of your own that you've done. The next best example is you read uh, on the newspapers, whatever, where a company that had no succession plan, they had to split the business up because of probate courts, so they, they uh, cut up the business in a very unfashionable way to show them a bad example. So you didn't do this now, asshole. You, know, you wouldn't say it that way. I do. I do. I don't give a shit. Okay? Because I know it's a numbers game. I'll I know in this room I can sell at least 10 of you something. Now make a shit what it is. From tampons to fucking earrings, you name it, I can sell you. It's a numbers game. So uh, this doesn't work. This guy next door, and you knew him 30 years, and he didn't, you know, you can pay me now, or you can pay me later. He didn't pay the devil the first time around, and they split up his business. His children went starving. His grandchildren went starving. His wife, blah, blah, blah. that's one way. That's, the shit, that's a shit way, but it works. Best way is to find somebody that successfully you did it with, and the next best way is to find somebody else that did it successfully. But you've got to do a lot of homework. And you just finger fucking with Google. I mean, you you got to do the searches. You got to find the people. They're there. And the second example that Teddy gave us a question is he's right. In the cash business, you roll, you fin you do the cash business out of the basis of your other business, which you were be able you you were able to finance. Then you roll them all up together and you refinance the whole bundle. Now you didn't know that two years ago, did you, Teddy? No, I know you didn't. I don't know. I don't know what they knew in Bulgaria. I really don't. I think that it's still, I still think it's behind the Iron Curtain. It's just they pretended not to be. Okay, okay let me stop you there. Cash business is like a pub <coughs> that uh, collects a lot of cash over the, the counter. Or any cash business, it's mostly like uh, a, uh, some physios, some candy shops where they're collecting a lot of cash. Okay, I've been saying this for 30 years, 35 years. Healthcare telecommunications, telco is internet now. Cybersecurity is hot, 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 hot. I'm going to say it again. Cybersecurity is hot, hot, hot. You can't hardly, the problem is cybersecurity has been bid up. It's very, uh, it's, 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 it's not hard to find a motivated seller, but the motivated sellers have all uh, uh, fallen in love with the multiples of public companies and cybersecurity. Okay. But it's uh, healthcare, people my age don't want to get old. They don't want to die. 
Three quarters of all the money that's spent in health care is spent the last year of a human life. Three quarters of that three quarters is spent the hundred, last 120 days of human life. So all those kinds of businesses, nursing, uh, home, what I call bedpan businesses, where you can't, you, know, you can't take care of yourself anymore, and you as their children don't want to take care of your parents, you kick them to the curb. And now you've got a reason to kick them up, motherfuckers, to the curb, because they gave you shit advice all your goddamn life. Healthcare telco. Healthcare telco. And you want big margins, 20 to 40 percent gross margins, and preferably you want no, you want barrier to entry. You, unfortunately, most of the businesses now have low, no, next to no barrier to entry. In other words, anybody can go into business against you. And you find motivated sellers through associations. All you have to do is, for example, if you're going to roll up uh, chiropractors, I mean, there's an association for the chiropractors. And they have newsletters, and they're always complaining. They got nobody to sell, and they're having seminars by some motivational asshole that doesn't know a goddamn thing to make them feel better, not to help them sell their business. Okay, well, then, well what do you like doing? Other than drugs and sex, what do you like? Well, I don't have much experience with those two. No experience with drugs or sex. Well, I feel that's too bad. But no, but I mean, okay, but what do you like to do? Well, I mean, you find something to experiment. What did you like to do when you were a kid? Okay, so I, I, I've had kids that uh, loved playing tennis. They weren't quite good enough to be a, a professional. So they, uh, they rolled up t tennis shops. We had a professional golfer at the last seminar from, um, what's Scouse mean? That Liverpool, right? Uh, from Liverpool. And um, the... Uh, but he doesn't like golf. He's a, a golf pro, but he doesn't like golf. That's funny. But I mean, what did you like to do? I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of different things. Um, we've had people roll up bookstores. Of course, bookstores now, we've got a problem because of the internet and the tablets and all that kind of thing. Um, if, you, if, you, if you spoke Spanish until um, President Trump put a, a nail in the coffin of uh, Cuba a couple of days ago, I used to sit, tell people, go to Cuba. If you speak French, go to Haiti because they have nothing. They absolutely have nothing in Haiti. It's just the shits. And I mean, um, well, I don't want to go down there. I'll be away from my... You see what I mean? I'd go to hell and have sex with the fucking devil himself. I don't give a shit. And there are a lot of people just like me. Some people say that I have had sex with the devil before my wife. Some people say, I am the devil. <laughs> but I mean, so you've got to find something that you like. But b believe me, kids, if you don't do something that you like, it gets old. It gets old, 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 quickly, quickly, quickly. Okay, yes, sir. Okay, Gatsby, you again. Sure. Just, it's quite simple. There's two ways to buy a company. You either buy it in the, uh, in the company form, and that means your assets and liabilities, Liabilities, meaning debt, come together. Or you buy just the assets of the company. Assets of the company, they keep the uh, debt. Hopefully, when you're buying assets, you're buying cash, but they're going to say, if I'm going to keep the debt, I'm going to keep the cash, too. So you're just going to buy the bricks and mortar. It's, it's simple. It's, it's, uh, it, the guys won't want to sell their business that way because why would they want to keep the liabilities uh, and the cash? Now, if the cash is, uh, you know... Uh, geometric in size, uh, and they deem the liabilities to be small. But the problem is when you buy a company, you buy all the current, present, and future liabilities. The guy may not have come, he may have been uh, on a desert island for the last 70 years, and he's got a piece of paper that says the company owes him $42 billion, and he shows up just after you close. So you want to buy assets if you can. But most, most transactions are... Uh, assets and liabilities. Okay, next question. Uh, lastly, uh, Again, it, it, it depends on, you know, uh, are there, are there uh, uh, taxes current? Uh, the, it depends on all kinds of things. There's no rule of thumb. The, the only thing that you have to remember is that if you're following my model, you're not paying for them on a timely basis. You're paying them when you close. And if the first deal craters and it doesn't close, they roll the fees into the second deal. And if the second deal doesn't close, then they roll the deal, uh, fees into the third deal. Most big accounting firms, top 10, will allow you to roll three deals. 
because that's all they allow private equity firms. The longest I've ever had is we've cratered seven deals and the eighth deal uh, came to fruition. I actually went to mass for that deal, praying that it happened. How do I say discipline? Yeah. I don't hang around with you guys. I mean that seriously. Uh, even my mentees, I only deal with on a weekly basis, uh, not on a daily basis. Uh, I, um, I don't really have any friends that I see maybe more than two, three times a year. Uh, uh, my, my wife uh, is, um, um, I never looked at it, I never mentioned it this way, but she's my, the only friend I have I see on a daily basis. Um, and she's, um, she understands focus. She works just about as many hours as I do a week. Um, the hardest thing that for the, most of the kids that try to implement this is uh, staying uh, motivated and focused because their partner's not. And I've heard a million times, oh, my partner's uh, supportive. That's horseshit. They're supportive until it's her mother's birthday. They're supportive until Christmas. That's it. That's a, tr that's a fucking truth. Don't bullshit yourself. I don't give a shit how, how much they think they're supportive. They're not. They're, it's like... Um, it was read about me. I get you to do the things you don't want to do to be the th what you want to be. Okay, when push comes to shove, you know, blood's thicker than water, money's thicker than both. A daughter is a daughter the rest of her life. A son's a son till he takes a wife. And that's it. Those laws were written in stone a long time ago. And it's not very often that you can get somebody to cross over. It's not, it's, not, it's not totally um, impossible, but you stay around motivated people or stay around nobody. I prefer nobody. Well, her friends are probably twits, and so uh, that's why rich people send people to rich schools, and it, it sounds, it sounds uh, wrong, but it's the reason why the Rockefellers, uh, uh, why Eaton is what it is. It's why well, I was going to send our children to Ampleforth, which is the the Catholic uh, uh, boarding school that produce all the high-ranking Catholics in Britain. It's who they go to school with to begin with. And um, to answer your question specifically, um, in my day in America, parochial, or when they say parochial in America, they mean Catholic schools, did it the best. And there, you know, in this, in this country where they have, uh, uh, even though I think uh, sending a kid off to boarding school when they're three or four, but I have neighbors that went away to boarding school at two and a half years of age. Two and a half. I mean, but, you know, the, and he has double-barreled name you didn't recognize. And so what I'm saying is who they go to school with now. Give them the best example you possibly can. Um, they should, don't read the, the, the rubbish that's, that's out there. Uh, on my site, there's uh, seven or nine books that if you have to read something, uh, you can read, um, the, uh, including kids. Uh, the, um, for those of you that know uh, the Spartan man, Joe Decina, uh, he's the guy that does the Spartan, real, uh, you know, where you go out and you beat yourself up and climb up and down mountains. He's coming with his 11-year-old son this, this summer to the castle. And um, the, I'm not trying to say to come to the castle, but I'm just telling you. It, the, the kids don't do what you tell them to do. They do what they see you do. Again, kids don't do what you tell them to do. They do what they see you do. And, uh, and as my children would attest to, at my 70th birthday a year or two ago, all kinds of people came up to ask my kids, is he really like this? <laughs> and uh, my daughter, after the second day, it's a three-day uh, event, are these guys retarded, Dad? They, everybody comes asking ask me the same question. They ask Sally, is he really like this? you got to be there because the kids know when you're bullshitting. And uh, you've got to be consistent. What kids need today is consistency and leadership. Consistency and leadership, and that's not what they have. For example, you're strict with them and you send them off to your grandpa their grandparents, your parents. And the grandparents let them do whatever the fuck they want. And that's part of being a grandparent. I'm just, we're just recently a grandparent for the first time a year and a half ago. Um, but um, the, I certainly, you know, she's just a little teeny thing now,
But I mean, I certainly, when she's old enough to walk around, I'm going to be strict as shit. And, and that, contrary to what you think, that won't be, easy, that won't be hard for me at all. Because I don't know any different. And so, and, and you, you may have to, you know, flip like a chameleon and, and be strict. Strictness is good. Sensitivity equals poverty, guys. Jesus Christ, look at you. Are you proud of where the fuck you are? No. You want your kids and grandkids to come fucked up like you? No. I hope to God not anyway. So don't bullshit yourself. Sensitivity equals motherfucking poverty. Now, if you want to go with Mother Teresa's, or now St. Teresa, we support a few of their orphanages. We can get you a spot. In fact, four Christmases ago, we tried to buy habits for the nuns, at, uh, two of the Mother Teresa's in the Philippines. We we're asking, now, asking a nun for her measurements. Can you just imagine this? Okay. And so they asked our assistant down there, why does Mr. Penny want our measurements? Because he's going to buy you new habits. Oh, no. God provides our habits. So Sister Gloriosa, who was a what? I said, I'm going to go hear this with my own ears. I don't believe this. And, she, and it got holes in him, flea bitten. I mean, all the, I mean, really beat the shit. Well, when do you get new habits, sister? Well, God, God provides. Well, I drill down a little. What does that mean? When other nuns die, we get their habits. So who had the habits you've got on now, Sister Gloriosa? And then she says, Sister Elizabeth, Sister... The, fuck. I mean, if you want to, you want that. Well, I know where to send you. They have no cell phones. They have no radio. They have nothing. No, nothing. And they work 12, 16 hours a day. She says, "God bless me that I can carry two 100 pounds bags of rice on my fucking back." She didn't put it that way. I am blessed because I can carry these two. You couldn't carry two 100 pounds bags of rice on your back. If you want, I know where to send you. Sensitivity equals poverty. I want you to toughen up. I want you to man up. Act like you had a pair. You too, ladies. Okay, two more questions, then we're going to go have drinks. Okay? Okay. Oh, now everybody raises their fucking hand. Okay, yes, sir. How do you sleep less and have more energy? Well, I was born high on life, and I don't take drugs, although I pushed off heroin to 90. I already told you that. Uh, I eat right, and my wife keeps me straight, and I don't drink very much anymore. I'm going to drink today. My wife makes me drink. This is my cop-out. She makes me drink when we travel. She makes me drink, but when we're, you're drinking at night, I don't drink. No, I don't drink. I, uh, I sleep like four hours a night? No, 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 no. I sleep, I, I need seven. I'm better off at nine. I can function. I can function on four or five. But now, where I used to be able to go a week that way and with no sleep a couple nights, no. Now I can go a couple nights, and then I've got to catch up. And I take naps now. I took, I took a 20-minute nap this afternoon after she uh, drug me around uh, the wall. The, uh, the, and they say that you can get around the wall in 40 minutes. And uh, those people, they were, they were on the four-hour march around that wall. I didn't see. We got around it in about 42 or 44 minutes. And I don't know. Uh, that must, that's publicity. That's bullshit. Because these old people... Okay, so eat right, exercise, exercise at least five days a week. Some days I exercise twice a day. But the gym for me is about from here to the camera, so I don't have to go too far. For those of you that are mortals, mere mortals. Okay, another question. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Peña. Uh, you You're not Asian, are you? Sri Lanka. Well, isn't that, no, Sri Lanka, that's, that's where uh, Sister uh, Luce is. We have a, a mission there outside, uh, what's the name of uh, uh, the big city? Yeah, we have we we support your brethren up, up there. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, well, parents want the best, but they don't want to pay for it. <laughs> that's that's the age old adage. It is there, but I I believe internet. I don't. I believe even though I don't like internet education because I believe you have to have somebody in front of you. But internet education. When we went to China, they asked us to uh, educate 500 million Chinese by the web. And uh, the, uh, of course, they didn't want to pay for it. They wanted me to pay for it for the benefit of me being able to say that I educated 500 million China, Chinese. And I told them I'd pass on that experience. I didn't need that. But getting back to your question, um, 
there is money in education, but there's more money in top end education, not low life education, because they because now you can get educated for free. It's it's the and I'm not suggesting Eaton's the only you know, and I'm sure Eaton's expensive. I don't know that for a fact. I only know a few people that went to Eaton. Um, the um, but there is money in education, but you have to look at it specifically. You got you need big margins. Okay. You mean the top end higher studies? No, no, no. Top end rich people. Right. Rich people, like the schools that we sent our kids to, not the schools I went to. You know, the schools I went to. You know, they um, it was free. Of course, you got what you paid for. Also, I graduated in the year of last corporal punishment, which I got. Also, 1963 was the peak for pre-university education. The educational system in America peaked in 1963. They say my high school degree is like a two or three year university degree today. Today. Where they still did sentence structuring, breakdown, they knew what a dangling participle or a, they knew what syntax was. I'm looking at all these guys, they're looking at me like I'm talking Greek here. Okay. We're going to uh, go in the back. I'll talk to you some more for uh, wine. Uh, and I want to thank the university very much for the opportunity. Uh, and hopefully I'll get to do it again. Thank you. Thank you.